going live, and then like you'll see people set up for like thirty minutes or an hour. Like even like like the bigger esports and all that stuff, like they'll have the countdown going for like thirty minutes to an hour before the event actually starts, oh, wow. and then the event will start, but it's the pregame for thirty minutes, and then the game will actually start. Because they want to, they want people, they want the chat to be filled. At yeah. the st- when the things actually kick off, you know. Yeah. So, is there anything that uh, okay Matt and I could be doing while you're setting up? Uh, make yourselves comfy, so maybe get a drink. Oh, sure. Um, it's tough. That's <laughs> tough for us. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good right now. Okay. Um, I got my jug of water somewhere. Like all this that's happening right now, will probably be cut out when I edit it. But this is your jug here? That's my jug. Wow. I'm just gonna let people know we're okay. on, and then we can start talking about like how to get started. Oh. Okay. Yeah. First you go gra- you go grab a drink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. First you need your drink. First you need your drink. Okay. You okay. drink half a bottle. <laughs> First you drink half a bottle. Okay. Now what's the next step? All right. We have to actually place all the drink, all the things on the board. Uh this. Well, that's a great idea. How to play drunk games. <laughs> you just get really drunk and just start playing games. No, it's time to sit. No. Alright, so, um, I'm going to be manning the laptop. Okay. I don't think anyone's watching it. Oh, we have one watching. That's prob- it? It's probably me. That's not fair. That's not fair. I've, I don't know if that's a thing. Maybe it's someone else. Maybe it's me. I don't know. Well, actually, um, be in the chat. Be like, who are you watching? Some people don't like to chat. I have green for live stream health. That's really good. So let's do this. If I go full screen with this, the chat doesn't show. That's what I thought. Okay. This is the frustrating part with being the man at the helm is there's not enough like space on the browser anyways we're fine all right because i can't watch the video and the chat it's it's silly really it sounds like you're better so. like everything's collapsed so it's as minimum as possible but there's still not if i'm watching the video i can't see the chat so i don't know why that's a thing anyways okay a chat demonstration for beginners from the ground up. <laughs> I didn't even put it with a special guest that has no idea what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Yay! Yay! Uh, you guys know Matt from Dang. Was has it been since like November or something? I think it's been a while since they've actually seen me. Seen me. Yeah. Like we, I've been in the video, but not like. In the in the video. Like in it's, usually, in the... it's usually us like playing silently or whatever while you're recording. Well, we haven't been. Yeah, so we have the washer and a whole bunch of stuff in there just sitting. Bleach soaking, yeah. How long is that supposed to be soaking? It's probably done. So do you want me to start the machine? I got it. It's okay. No, I'm, I'm just hanging around. So I'm uh, something this one. Um, well, come introduce yourself because um, we're just getting started. So um, I got it. I got it, I promise. Oh. <laughs> so, in case anyone's wondering, we're at Carl's house tonight. Yay! Today, and uh, we're talking about doing his laundry. So, oh, we're, 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 we're live right oh, now. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, oh, why, yeah. that's why I was like, don't worry about my laundry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, in case people are wondering. Uh, and they can see some, I can see a little bit of China in the China cabinet in the background, barely. Yeah. Yep, we're at home. It's raining. Beautiful rainy day. Sacramento, California. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Where is the link for your live? We just. Uh, oh, we should share the link. Let's do that. I'm going to copy and paste everywhere for people that need it. Let me know. Let me do that real quick. My uh, laptop. Wait, dash, live dashboard. That's not the right. Come on. This thing. I'm guessing no, I'm not allowed to swear. I don't think that's right. <laughs> you don't think it's okay for me to swear? No, no. Um, 
This is a, this I'll bleed that out later. Yeah, guys, this is Game of Thrones slash Song of Ice and Fire, so, um... So it's okay to swear then. <laughs> I forget what you're saying, man. I you mean... You really copy yourself, man. <laughs> I'm like, come on, now. This is getting frustrating. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So hopefully this stays going live, because I can't stand this dashboard. I'm going to go actually to my video. No, not my profile. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I lost it. <laughs> are you tech illiterate? <laughs> no, it's just YouTube, okay? You, I don't want YouTube Studio. I want to go to my channel. There it's, we go. It's pretty check savvy, this guy. Live now. See, it's still going. Told you. All right. There is the URL that I need. Perfect. I should mute, right. I should mute that. Okay. Yeah, because you get some feedback. Yeah, it's muted. Especially because it sounds like you're on delay. It is. It is on the. It, I mean, that's that's the way it is, bub. Okay. How long is the delay? I think it's like six seconds. Oh, cool. <laughs> maybe maybe a little less. Last time it was like ten seconds when I did <laughs> when I did uh what was it? It was a um. Wi-Fi live feed, mm -hmm. so it was super delayed. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was bad. So it's not recording. Anymore. We're not live anymore. We're live. No, so we're, we're yeah, we're chilling. Um, recording. And I'm gonna I'm 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 spreading my link around. So that's what I'm doing. Sound nice. That sounds good. Who wants the link? Yeah, who wants some link? <laughs> it sounds like it's like, yeah, spreading my link around. Little yeah. Carl's link here. Little Carl's link there. Little, huh? Yep. Little little link. So what do you do on the when you're not gaming there, Matt? What is it? Well, <laughs> what do I do? I basically just no. Um, <laughs> I work. Yeah. Um, I hang out with friends all sometimes. Love getting to talk to people about different things. Uh, but you're going for a career in data science. Data science. Data that's, science. That's the that's the dream, baby. That's, that's the, the dream. dream. You go to school for that. Yeah, I'm going to be going back to school in the fall. i got three classes left, and then I'll graduate, and then I will try and get the job in data science. Uh, I'm more interested in the people aspect of it, so that's also where the money is. So that's, that's, where, yeah, that's where the Facebook and the Google will hire people for that. So. Is it a bachelor's? Yeah. Or, uh, I have a bachelor's in math. You have a bachelor's in math? Well, I'm, tr I'm going to be getting a bachelor's in math. Let's be clear about this. Look, is that mm -hmm. emphasis in data science? Is that how no, pure math, uh, but with some programming background, oh. uh, because they need the pure uh, the pure maths more applicable. Cool. So, it's Sac State or small? So, it's kind of weird. I'm gonna be I'm gonna actually UC Santa Cruz. Oh, nice. But ideally, I'm gonna be taking the classes here in Sacramento. Online. Uh. Or no. Some of them might be online, but oh. uh, I just need to finish some things up, and then I'll be able to get my Santa Cruz degree here, because you know I just need like one or two classes. That's so. fantastic. Party party time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but it's gonna be good. And then, uh, like I said, after that, I'm gonna be going out and hopefully doing. We'll see what we'll go from there. Oh, it was in the UK group. All right, you guys, uh, you guys comfy yet? I'm comfy. Comfy. Okay, so um, waiting for one person. I know Paul's gonna hop on. Where's Paul? I'm curious what the stuff is. You said you oh, had stuff. I had stuff. Oh, the armies. That's not how you start, dude. You talk about what you need to play. Okay, the armies. I will put on the table momentarily. I know, Matt. Yeah, Matt yeah. wants to see the toys. Yeah. Oh, oh, speaking of toys. Uh, C Mon sent me those two pieces. Oh, replacements. Nice. Pieces, yeah. so well, also, I could talk them. about them while I show them on the camera. Well, here's what I mean. Okay. is <laughs> What do you need to be able to play this game? How about you, you want to introduce that so concept? Yes. yes. So what you need to play a Song of Ice and Fire, the miniature game, you do need a table. Now, ideally, you get a 4 by 4 foot area. We don't quite have that. 
but, but, but this not necessary. Closer. Yeah, we can have fun. Yeah, this will be close enough. But as long as you have a wide area to play with, you should be fine. Um, you will need one of the starter boxes because there are certain tokens and things in there. And that's actually it. Everything you need literally comes in the starter box. Boom. Uh, what comes in the starter box, and this is where I would like to be showing people, but you ah. know, while I open well, and talk about it. like I've thing. mentioned, I don't have like a new starter box. That's fine. So um, you need, of course, miniatures. Yes, you will need the miniatures. There will be plastic trays that your guy, your little miniatures will go into. You will need a deck of cards. Uh, that is provided for you, um, as well as the unit cards that actually tell you what everything does. Okay, uh, you will need dice, and you will need a measuring stick. And as I said before, this is all provided in this whatever starter box you decide to go. With. So, okay, Carl's link has been spread. <laughs> Hey, Simon Swan, what's happening? So, uh, I'm trying to think. Is there anything else you need, need? No, that's about it. You'll need the tokens that are also in the starter box. Mm, tokens, but yes. But we'll talk about the tokens as we get into the game. Because there's a couple different tokens, and unless I actually show people, I don't necessarily want to talk about them yet. Yeah, all right. So I want to those are things that are so, visual. So we have a table. Check. Now we need some stuff. Now we need stuff. Okay. So I guess I guess we'll go through it as you would do a game. Um, so we're going to talk about army construction at the very end, guys. So if you're interested in list building, I'm gonna, I'll put some links into some awesome resources like the War Council app and a Song of Ice and Fire Builder .com. Um, Really, you can just mess with those and learn a bunch. But we'll talk about it at the end. Right now, we're just going to hop into like setting up a game. We kind of went through, chat a little bit about what you need. Um, so I'm going to start with terrain. Ooh. So two players would bring an army to a table. okay? And someone needs to have the rest of the supplies, the terrain, the tokens. Um, your army includes not only miniatures and trays, but cards. Uh, a deck of cards and unit cards for stat references. Um, but when you begin a game, are you coming in, Mark? I'm just listening. Yes. Okay. When you begin a game, you'll each player will have their list, which is their army and cards and supplies, and you'll roll off for what we usually do is roll off for game mode, or we just talk about game mode usually. Yeah. So let's talk about game mode. What would you like to play today? Um, we could do a demo version, which would be no game mode. Or we could actually play a game mode from the rule book. What do you think is best for? I think I think the demo version is best for beginners. Yes. Um. So I agree. We can also talk about game modes later. Yes. I agree um, with that as so well. what we're gonna do is just set up a couple of objective points on the battlefield, meaning points of interest that will mm -hmm. score you points throughout the game. <laughs> um. Yeah. And if you guys, Mark, please jump in at any time if you go. What does that term mean? Um. By the way, folks, Mark is here. He's a, a wonderful friend of mine, a neighbor, and he is brand new, so he can hop in with questions that me and Matt might not think of, which is going to be really great. So here's some of those. Do you have tokens that aren't the special tokens? Yeah, I have I have bags, okay. dude. Let me yeah. see one of the bags. I need to see. I'm trying to pull out some tokens to show people. Yep, yep. But it occurred to me that there's Kickstarter exclusive tokens, but that's not the tokens most people Well, they're just get. plastic. It's the same tokens. Even they look a little different. People All right. Confused. You're right, Matt. You're right. People are confused. They're just like, let me show you what your box, if you buy a starter box, what the tokens will look like. Very good. So, let me just get this all out, and then we'll go through with it. And we'll explain, I'll explain the rules with some of the tokens a little later, but I want to show what they are. Cool. So Matt's going to go through tokens while I um, undisorganize myself behind the camera here. <laughs> <laughs> and what I, sh I should be like completely organized so I can just talk and do the chat while you guys do stuff. But Hey, looks great. Thanks, guys. Play Game of Thrones, he said. We're getting there. 
Well, that's the game mode he means. Oh. Kickstarter tokens will probably be harder to see on camera as well. Very true. Okay. So really quick, I think I have all the tokens in. This token right here is the objective token. Uh, basically, you're going to take your tray, which I don't have. Hmm. But that's fine. I'll show, we'll show you your trays later. I might. And when you touch on it, yeah. you're going to be claiming the objective. Okay, so bring that simple. bring that token up with like a background so the camera can fix on it. Maybe your hand to show with that because like we can barely see it. Like that? No, no, no. Like bring it up to the camera. Oh, I mean, bring it up yeah. to the camera, like, like right to here. Yeah, I think the battle mat I'm using is not. I should go get my um, swampy mat. Yes, yeah, I'll stand up. Okay. Is this centered? Um, there's a delay. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it fell off. <laughs> that's, that's great. Um. I still can't. Dang, that's a good delay. And not good. Tilt your hand because there's a glare from the sun. What is that called? Glare? Yeah, from that. Glare. From I'm talking about that. What is what is that called? That's a sun, uh, a sunroof? No, that's in a car. What do, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I think it's called sunroof. We got a sun. Oh, there you go. That's the good spot right there. All right. So this is the objective token as I was talking it's about. It's blue and it's 30 millimeter? It's 32. 30 to 32. 30, 30 millimeter, I think. Somewhere around there. It's got a little sword on it. It's blue with silver background. Or silver background. Cool. So those are objectives. Yes. Uh, this is the first turn token. Basically, whoever's going, going first in the round, which we'll talk about later, gets this. It's a nice big, uh, I don't know if you can see the picture. So bring your hand a little closer. Don't know if you can see the picture clearly. No, you gotta come this way, towards me. I, oh, there's a delay. So there's a delay. I know. So, <laughs> um, but there yeah, there it is. I don't know if you can right, see that's it the clearly. Spot. That's the spot. You're but in a good there's spot. There's an iron, the Iron Thrones picture there. So whoever's going first for the round gets this to, to signify, hey, you get the you get the first turn. And th and that alternates every that round. Al we'll get there. We'll get there. This token right here I brought out because it is a token technically uh, indicates what the round it is on right. the board. Round marker. Round marker. Reason. This one is three victory points. When you get victory points, and this is one victory point. If I just decide to throw it on the ground. And just so everyone knows, um, we're we're doing this because there are beginners that have no idea what anything is, so. You might just want to see gameplay. We'll get there. Yep. Now we're getting to the more complicated things. So this is a wound marker. Uh, it's just a little heart, but there are th certain things that just don't ha have one wound. They have multiple wounds, and we need a way to track that. Indeed. Um, this is an order token. Now, orders are important. Orders you can only do once per round, and it'll say on your unit cards or your attachment cards what the order is, if it's an order. So you just take the order token and place it over it to signify that you've used it for that round. That has a little horn on it. Yes. This is an activation token. It's green. It looks like there's some guys marching in it. And basically what that indicates is that, hey, this unit has activated already. So it can no longer activate later in the round. And these get picked up at the end of every round. Very good. Okay. Now come the three fun ones. So this is a broken uh, purple with a broken sword. This is called a weaken token. What a weaken token does is that you put it on an enemy unit, and then when you're when you roll to hit, your opponent says, "You know what? I want you to reroll all your successes." They <laughs> expand the the weaken token, and you have to reroll all your successful to hits. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how you said that later. It's funny. It's kind of backwards. but This is a vulnerable token. It's got a bro it's yellow with a broken shield. It's essentially like the weakened token, but instead of six making you reroll successful hits, your opponent makes you reroll successful saves. And finally, we have a panic token, which is orange with a little guy running away on it. So what this does is, after you roll a morale test, your opponent can make you reroll one or both dice if they wish. So those last three are called condition tokens. They're going to be on your cheat sheet. And if you'd like to show the cheat sheet, 
Um, this, co th these, this sheet also comes in the starter box, a little reminder sheet. Um, the condition tokens are on there, and basically, as a general thought, condition tokens are pow powerful tokens that let you force your opponent to reroll good stuff. Um, and there's, you know, in every category. So, um, so we have the tokens down. Let's set up. Do we want to talk about the package support? Not really. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and set up. I have a request for Game of Thrones. It's the only request, so you want to play that. Do you, you play a shorter version of it? Yeah, the only thing is that it's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and do the demo. So this is the demo. three objectives in the center of the board. Space like them out. Yeah. Like that? <laughs> yeah, There's, yeah, Matt. There's space. I mean, I. how far do they have to be apart? We'll do one dead center. Okay, that's about dead center. And the other two are in the middle of that and the edge. Like that. And like that. There we go. Okay. Is that about right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, what is that little thing? I need to wipe my camera off, it looks like. Dirty boy. <laughs> so we're going to turn this around. <gasps> and bonus is I'm going to find the perfect box. <laughs> the, wee, the hunt for the perfect box. <laughs> the hunt for the perfect box. Um, it might be a song of ice and fire. What we do is hopefully I don't ruin everything. Put this here. See how that looks just for a second. Put that there. Let's see. Yeah, I need to wipe my lens. That's all right. We'll do what what the dice actually say on them isn't as important as just discussing stuff but um this will be our little viewer i think man i'm just going to wipe the camera give me a second guys okay um so you got your objective tokens down yeah okay so next up we're not going to go through all the terrain but let's talk about let's see what we think we should use probably one one of each of those. I think we should use these two and probably the favorite piece of train ever, the barrier. Oh, the you, palisade? You, you, you need the palisade. <laughs> you, we're going to go with the three most commonly used piece of train. In the I game. like it. I like it. Okay, so I'll start explaining while you dig out the last piece. Thank you. So this is a were tree. A werewood tree. <laughs> It's not a werewolf it, it's tree. It's a were tree. <laughs> it's a werewood tree. <laughs> During the full moon, you turn into a tree. I like it. <laughs> um, anyways, so the tree, as you can see, the train's all flat. So that's the way your trays can just move right over them, which is very nice. So, but all the were tree does. I'm waiting for Carl to say it's a werewood tree, but that's okay. You're fine. It's a were tree. Um, I, all it does I hate is my it gives glare. you it's killer. plus one on all your morale tests. That's all it does. So it's a great benefit to do. Still waiting for the, oh, the barrier. I'll do the barrier next. There it is, yeah. So the barrier is just like it sounds. It's mm. a barrier. You cannot see through it. Nor can you pass through it. You can't even touch it. Technically, you can touch it, but you can't go over it. So you can put your base right up to it and touch it like that, but you can't clip over it. It's an impassable thing. And probably the most complicated piece of terrain in the game, but everybody loves it and is part of game mode, the corpse pile. It's literally a pile of corpses. <laughs> so it has three effects. First off, if you're within short range or six inches, it's minus one to all your morale tests. This is just a test of go. Second thing. This has less glare. The second thing just is if like you that. move just over it or through it or touch it at any point during your move, it's minus one to your movement. And finally, if you charge over it or through it or whatever. You have to roll two dice and take the lowest. And if you roll a one or a two, it's considered a disorder charge. Now, we'll cover what a disorder charge is later, as well as how to do charges later. 
but I figured I'd mention it now. So these are the three most popular pieces of the terrain. These are the three you'll probably see the most of. You'll see the others too, I'm certain. But these three in most games, at least you'll see at least one. So um, let's do another one of these. Okay. Okay. All right. So normal. All right. So we'll. I need dice now. You need dice. You ready to do some terrain? Yeah. All right, dice. folks. So um, assuming that the, both of these players, Mark and Matt, Eminem on the table, have brought their armies. Uh, they picked game mode, which is a demo version game mode. They will now roll off for terrain placement. Do -do -do -do. So that means we're going to be rolling a d6. Now to those uninitiated, a d6 is simply a six-sided die. And then they also give you one of my favorite things. They also give you a d3. It is a d6, but it only goes as two ones, two twos, and two threes, which I really like. I actually like d3. But for our purposes, we're going to be rolling a d6 or a six-sided die. So each of us, Mark, are going to roll a d6. Okay. And the person who rolls the highest is going to put down the first piece, first piece of terrain, and then we alternate. So I want to roll off a four to a three. So I'm going to put my favorite thing ever, the barrier, <laughs> right there. Favorite thing ever. Now you get this side. Now, there's a caveat. When we place terrain, it needs to be towards the center of the board. Uh, and it has to be short range or six inches away from other pieces of terrain. Dude, dude, you're my all-star today. So you like, just keep going. I can't put it here then because it's too close. Correct. Now what I'm waiting for... What's up? Is a measuring stick. Oh. We have one of those. Is that why you gave me that look when you I said did. six inches away? I did. I was waiting for... We decided to launch this early without having everything set up ready to go. Can I put these on... on That's our roll. Yes, you can. The token goes on top of it. You can put it right there. Now, you know the one I never got? was a night swatch ruler. I have not I have one. It's just well worn. I need to. Well, Stark and Lannister. Right. Let's do that. Even though so, we're not playing Lannisters. So here's the only caveat: is it needs to be right there, because that's six it's inches six away, inches or short range. Ooh. So, so short and six inches are the same. Yes. Okay. And now I have this: twelve inches is long range, which is also listed on the back here. Great. So I'm going to put down the next piece. I'm going to put down the wear tree over here. I'm pretty stoked we got a three-man team today for this. So, pretty stoked, if you couldn't tell. So, Carl, can you actually see the ruler that I got here? Yeah, where's your uh, cut It's off? a few-second delay. Hold on. Like, can, you, can you see where he just put the tree? In? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, just the... I mean, so about it... About an inch here is hidden, but that's it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Now you get to place down the last corpse pile. Okay. Now, I can't, I'm not giving I can't that put it to towards me box. or toward you. Correct. Right. Okay. So in general, there's more specific rules in the rule book, but in general, you have to put it in the middle here, mm -hmm. somewhere in the city. There's more specific rules for it, but this is a demo. So, so based on your six-inch rule, I can't put it here, here. Here, so it's got to be over here, right? Mm -hmm. And is this as far as we're, as we're playing? Okay, yeah, that's as far as we're playing. You can put it right on the edge if you want. Just put a stick it out here. All right, there we go. Done. Okay, now we're going to roll off again. We're going to roll a d6. D6? Mm hmm So I rolled a 5. Mark rolled a 4. So the winner of this roll... Oh, don't want to confuse the dice. Uh, the winner of this roll will either get to choose sides and then deploy the first unit, or they get to go first. Now, I'm going to choose to go first just because I have a little more experience, and that way I can show how to actually do this. So, if I try to set up this board so that it, it works for me really well, if you win the roll, 
me sit in different chairs and everything yep. I try to do is yep. oh, okay. so you need to be very certain it's like okay I, you if you heard just a more balanced board set Good idea. also though you might do that on purpose knowing that your army can overcome the obstacle that you put out that way you ensure going first right because because if he wins the roll he's gonna take that side of the table no matter what that means you get to go first <laughs> Oh wow! Okay, this is deep stuff. Deep stuff. Let's, not, let's not do that. Let's we're keeping it simple. <laughs> no, that's Carl. good. No, that's good. So good strategy never works for me. <laughs> <laughs> so how many units did you want to play with? That's a great question too. Um, so, so at this point, we're deploying. Yeah, we're at the deploy. Phase. Okay, cool. And, and that's going first. So I'm gonna help mark out while you tray up some stars. Okay. Um, I'm right. just thinking probably three units each. And I'm just gonna use gray trays, not my. Painted ones. Yep. So I'm um, try to keep the points, you know, that's similar. Fine. Can you hand me a cavalry tray? Yeah. So and and gray ones. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna quickly show off. These are the trays. So this is an infantry tray. I'll show off the other two in a moment, but I wanted to show this off first. There's 12 slots here for the 12 guys that are going to be on your tray. Uh, this is considered the front here because there's an arrow here. Now, facing matters a lot in this game, and we'll cover that when we get to that point in a minute. Mm -hmm. But the little notches here determine the arc, so front arc, side arc, rear arc. And the little arrow determines two things. One, which side's the front, as well as if you do any ranged attacks, they're measured. Uh, the range is measured from the front tip. Is it the, the top part or the bottom part? Uh, it's the tip. It's, it's, an angle. it's at the tip of the arrow. Oh, so the measuring is from the tip of uh, firing is from the tip of the arrow. Uh -huh. um, besides that, though, it's uh, the bottom part. Because yeah. it is slightly slanted. Uh, so that's an infantry tray. This is a cavalry tray. Now, cavalry only has four guys, but they have three wounds each. I know. No, it's the entire world, usually. What's up? Cavalry. Cavalry. Yeah. What's wrong with cavalry? It's cavalry with a V first. <laughs> cavalry was where Jesus was um, uh, crucified. Listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> this is cavalry base, all right? And this is technically oh, a monster base right here. Uh but in general, right now in the game, you'll be putting uh, the dire wolves on it, as well as a giant or two. We don't have giants in this, but I figured I'd mention it. So, all right. So I'm gonna be Starkies. Starkies. Is that a language or? In stark con contrast, what you think? In stark contrast. <laughs> Good one. Good one. So let's see here. I don't even know what I want to do or to be. Don't, don't even, just don't even think. Just okay. Think. Well, I want the dog. I want, do I have Hodor? Because I want to hold the dog. I get all the painted pieces, huh? Oh, these aren't uh, done, but they're, they've been started to get painted. They look pretty good. Which is the story of my life, you know? Start some units, move on to the next ones, never finish anything. Yes. So do, do I get any... Uh, uh, advantage because mine are painted and his are Absolutely. Uh, his the dice gods will treat you well. Uh -huh. The yeah. dice gods love, gods love me. This is a known fact. <laughs> this is true. They will That's not have It me. doesn't matter. If it doesn't painted. matter. <laughs> All right. My, the dice gods yeah. love I, we're, me. We're yeah. really happy that my, Matt doesn't have his dice. <laughs> but, it <doesn't, laughs> but it doesn't matter. All right. Let's get some cards. And I think this tub is done. Rub a dub dub. Um, three units? No, I'm putting technically four because of the doctor, but... Okay, so that's what I'll do. Six, six, eight. That uh, sounds like 20 points on the board. Yep, and then whatever you want to do on the sideboard. Okay. So this is how you fill trays, guys. <laughs> this is how you fill trays. <laughs> I've got an albino here. Yeah, uh, oh, there are some amazing um, uh, tips out there for storage solutions for really fast... Um, you know, magnetizing your trays and just boom, pop them out and you're ready to go. Which I don't have ready, so I can't show that. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't apply to the Night Watch, but for most other armies, they're going to have a flag bearer 
Okay, now the flag bearer is going to go in the front left of the tray based off of where the arrow is, like so. Okay. Okay. And you remove from right to left, back to front when things die. I'm going to need the bazookas. Bazookas. It's called bazookas. Okay. Oh, they're not. They're not. Give me one more of those. Uh, I will cover that. I will need one more. I need a berserker chair. Here, do you want to use him? Yes, I do. So, and this is going to lead into my next part. So, this unit is also done correctly. However, I have a unit attachment. So, what the unit attachment does is he's going to take the front left spot, which is normally where the flag bearer goes. And he's going to shift the flag bearer over by one. And the reason why he does this is uh, twofold. One, he'll be the last guy that gets removed. And so that way it's like, hey, I know that this unit still has it there. Two, it signifies to my opponent when it's set up across the board that, hey, this unit has an attachment in it. So it's a visual cue. Do you want to use these or not? No, I have these. Oh, you already got it. So what does an attachment do? Or is, that, is it too soon to ask that question? Well, when we get to the unit cards, okay. which we probably are at right now, but we're not quite there there yet. Okay. Take any extra stuff on the board. Um, and just as a side note, the whole moving the banner one step over, that isn't expressly written. It's just that's how we like to do it. Well, where's the attachment supposed to go? The attachment is... Expressly written. Okay. But the banner, the ma the banner man himself is just kind of, it's. So it's, I can put the banner back here then, if I want to. I mean, it, I don't, I don't see why not. Okay. Um, so it would be the first unit I remove. It'd be, yeah, sure. <laughs> all right. Uh, by the way, you're the one that taught me all this. By the way. No, this is your. That's how I like to do it. It's okay. easy to see if there's an attachment or not. Okay. Right? Actually, in the in the old wars, so the those flags were up. In the front. There you go. So that the uh, the units knew who to follow. I'm glad Mark's here. Okay. Are you really giving him bars? Why would I? Oh, you don't like to play against bars? I'm Mr. fine with playing. Mr. With play with bars every game? That's complicated. It's okay. complicated. It's not complicated. It's different. No, no. Varus is this character. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I'm going to be having... Okay, you're right. Fine. I'm 100% right. You know I'm right. Don't be lying about that. Well, I'll give you Bowen. Thank you. No March. March is better anyways. <laughs> March is awesome. He is awesome. See, now we're now we have even numbers on it. So it's four three, four three. And how's your points looking? Uh are we not carrying? We have seven I think you have more than that. That's fourteen fine. and six is twenty. Twenty and twenty, right? Okay. Twenty and twenty. You got your commander in? Boom. You got your wolves? Boom. You got your NCUs? Boom. Yep. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about the deck of cards. And what is an NCU? Oh, an NCU. So uh, this these these trays on the battlefield are your combat units, mm -hmm. and to abbreviate non-combat units, which are these little guys oh, gotcha. that are going to be placed here, we call them NCUs, which is nice. <laughs> the camera can't see that, right? Yeah, you can see that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In fact, um, oh, as soon as I hand this deck of cards to you, I'm gonna um, wipe the lens because I think there's a little, a little something on the lens. So. Okay. Let's see. That is Jon Snow's attachment version. Go ahead, uh, Matt. And that's I, I can go ahead. All right, folks. So, so you want to you want to talk about the deck? Yes. So each faction has their own unique tactics deck, which is going to include 14 cards. Um, there's actually seven cards in there that are doubled twice, so it's a total of 14. Uh, and these cards are going to have unique triggers in a different color at the top of the card that says when you get to play the card. You don't get to play the card whenever you want, unless it says so. Some cards actually say, hey, I feel like playing this. But in general, most cards will say, when you do an attack before the attack dice are rolled, play this card. Right. When you receive after the attack dice are rolled, you have to make saves. Play this card. I'm gonna be a little more specific with a picture. I mm -hmm. think I might do overlays later. You know, yeah. this is live, but um, let's go here. 
Okay. Let's use Jon Snow's Stand United Brothers card. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going to wait for a second because yeah. of the delay. No. But that's the title of the card there. Mm -hmm. the, the bold print here is your trigger. That is the timing of when you can play it. For example, when a friendly combat unit passes a morale test. As soon as that happens, you can play this card. Of course you show the most powerful card in the game. Um, no, this is, uh, oh, that's this not. is healing. That's the healing. healing one. Never mind. Um, so, you do get more cards, because that card, if you notice, has a picture in the upper right. You will have a commander either on the battlefield or on the sideboard that will give you extra abilities as well as give you six extra cards in your tactics deck. Three cards that are doubled up for a total of six. So your tactics deck should be a total of 20 cards. Yep, and this is all, most, pretty much every single thing we say is in the rule book. Yes. So, um, a good reference to have that out while we yes. while we uh, hang out here. Um, because mm -hmm. we're, we're chatting in an unorganized fashion. Yeah. So, um, that's why I showed you the wrong card with a yeah. picture in the corner. Yeah. So Mark's commander is going to be the almighty Jon Snow. Is that him? Yes. That is white? Yes. All right. Um, and we will, this, as of you this. say almighty. <laughs> yes. Uh, so as of this recording, we don't actually know what's going to happen at the end of the show. So, but. We're not going to talk about the show at all. No, not okay. Not, but, not once. Well, if Matt. I, if I, if I had known what happens next, I would comment about, John, well, exactly. Uh, my commander is this fine fellow right here. Let me just throw him, <laughs> let me just throw him on the board. And while I'm trying to remember his name, I believe well, it was Edder Stark. He is all about movement, so throwing him around isn't too out of character. And this is Edder Stark, if I remember correctly. Correct? Nope. There's this oh, uh, a side comment, folks, for everyone watching. Okay. Um, <laughs> Matt doesn't know much about the IP, and nope. Mark pretty much knows nothing. Yay. So this is a perfect test of just playing the game. <laughs> yeah. So who is this guy then? That's Rob Stark. So this is Rob Stark, and he's my commander. And he's joining the Berserker, the Umbar Berserkers. What is Umbar stand? Berserkers. Umbar. Okay, sure. What is IP stand for? Intellectual property. Oh, okay. I don't read the books. I've watched one episode of the show. I've got no intellectual property whatsoever. <laughs> I know nothing. I, I, I get I make all the memes, I get all the jokes, but things still have to be explained to me and I can't pronounce things correctly. For instance, I go like I make ho the door jokes and people are like, You don't watch the show, you don't know the references. I'm like, listen, Hodor is wonderful. He should have sent the gold the golden uh, the iron throne, not the golden throne, but um yeah, this is going to be great. There's going to be lots of hilarity <laughs> ensuing when you two start talking about the IP. It's going to be fantastic. All right. <clears throat> okay, I'm, I'm going to try this. Um, Lens. Okay. Lens white. So we'll start deploying, and then we'll get the unit cards after Carl cleans the lens. So when you deploy in this scenario, you're going to take your finger right here, feel the edge of the board here. Um, okay. So you're going to deploy at long range. Okay. okay. So you get to deploy first. So. Oh, that's because the camera's still brand new and it has a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you put the film on. The uh, what is that called? Mm -hmm. Protective plastic oh, is still yeah. on it. Yeah. Now I hey. suggest deploying all the way out because one of the things I noticed that newer players do is they play too defensively. Mm. But I suggest deploying all the way out with just one unit. But that's my suggestion. Okay, of these three units, it looks like this would be my strongest. Cause that is your strongest unit. Well, my your strongest thanks. defensive unit. <laughs> All right. So I don't want to get. I don't want to fight well, that unit. And the, the ultimate idea of the game is to get these or to kill you. Both. Oh, You're great, right. great question, Mark. The ultimate name of the game is to win via victory points, and you get victory points by both holding your position on top of those markers, mm -hmm. and so. also by killing his units. Okay. Except for the dog. The dog is not worth anything. The dog is not worth anything on either side. Not either side. Okay. Do we have any ranged? No. That's good. All right. So That's good? Yeah. I'm guessing I think I'm going to throw in the trackers instead of the Swarm Brothers. Do we we don't want to talk about ranged? We'll talk about ranged later. Yeah, because like, well, especially if you look at the... Whoa. It has to be within long range. Oh, right. It, it, 
within. So the top part of it. The top part of it. There you so go. So game modes have different deployment zones, folks. In this demo situation, we're just doing a long range deployment, which means you alternate setting out a unit, combat unit specifically, within long range of your table edge. Okay. Now, uh, different deployment zones are specified in the different game modes. So I'm, I'm looking at this board as, as a new person playing this game. I see that there's some stuff on that one and that one, but that one's clear. Mm -hmm. So that's the one I'm going to try to go for first. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. Your, your turn then. Yeah. That does make sense. Um, the tree that's on that one that you pointed at? This one here? That's actually beneficial terrain. Not all terrain is bad, right? Oh, okay. So the tree is going to boost your morale. Oh, good. That's fine. We're going to go put Stark Sworn Swords with the Umbar Champion over here. <laughs> because you know that that is a good thing to have, the tree? Yeah. Okay, okay so I'm going to oh. put that right there. So that means that. And I'm going to signify this down by putting a little flag in front of it. Do I get a flag too? Uh, no. I don't think we have extra flags. Well, fine. Um, Give no flags to the new guy. I get it. No. Okay. If we have the crows, but I don't well, know. I got crows. These guys? Yeah, that's your deck. Go ahead. Put that down in front. That's your activation. Oh, cool. I was wondering what these things were. All right. So I'll go up here then. Oh, I was working on cards, right? Is that yes, you were working on cards. <laughs> you were trying to get the decks set up for each of us, and then we need the unit cards as well. Because. Unit cards? When was the last time we used unit cards? Well. Yesterday? I use them every time because <laughs> I play by the rules, Carl. I don't uh -huh. know about you. That's not in the rules. <laughs> then you told me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be in the rules, actually. I don't know. Oh, there's Amon. Yay. Found Amon. Blink. And you have your deck ready, so put this stuff away. Okay. Let's see this down. Over to Starks. Hmm. Starks are just so stark, you know? Blah. Look here. What do we got here? Oh, oh that's a jewel. Sure yeah. Makes sense to me. This is going to be nice. I'm going to find things I've been looking okay, for. Can you tell me a little through. bit about this? That's a dog. <laughs> it's a dire wolf, not a it's dog. A, it's a dog. And does he move faster than the others? He does move faster. Um, I would wait for the unit card, but I can fully explain his rules. Dogs are fragile. So, this is Ghost. Ghost has a rule that when Jon Snow activates, Ghost can activate in the same turn, either before or after Jon Snow's unit activates. Hmm. So that means, normally it's just one at a time, right? Mm -hmm. They get to do it together. They get which, to... which is important for his, set, his attack ability. So he has two wounds. So which two, means, two wounds, he's dead. He's really fragile. Mm -hmm. right. okay. um, he has a three up save, which means when he takes a hit, he saves on a three. He has a two up morale. He moves six. Now, when he activates, he can take a free maneuver, which is he pivots on the spot. He then gets to move forward in a straight line up to his... Uh, Movement, so that would be like to there, mm -hmm. and then pivot on the spot again, and then he can take an action because he gets a free action. He gets a free. So that's move. why he's so fast, is because he gets a bonus move every time he activates. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, can you tell me again about these things? Is it the first one to it gets it yes. and keeps it, or no? It, if you take you, it over, you get it. No. So you you get it. So in this scenario, these don't move. If you're the first one here sitting on it, you're controlling it. But if you leave, then you don't control it anymore. Uh -huh. It stays. It's like it's, a king of the hill type of. Yes. Okay. So and like I said, the dogs are fragile. However, he has two additional abilities. When he attacks, he gets two dice. His attacks do not allow saves of any kind. Oh. Okay. Okay. Right. And in addition, when you when he attacks, your opponent cannot use tactics cards for the rest of that turn. There's a lot going on here. You're gonna mm -hmm. tell me as you go. Right? Yeah, I, I was gonna say save it. Yeah. I'll, I'll help Mark out with nice watch cards when, he's, when we start drawing and stuff yeah. like that. So how are we doing on deployment, guys? We're actually deployed. We're finished. Cool. Um, so. Now, I mean, just as a general thought, you see, I've, I've kind of broken up mine between the two sides, and he's got all of his guys basically to the to the right side of the barrier. So he's going to focus in here. 
Right. Um, I was going to mention um, exactly that. Like, there are some really cool like mini games happening within this game, such as the deployment phase, which is you might have a blanket strategy for your army, but depending on what your opponent does, you can adjust, right? right? So it's a cat and mouse type of thing where what do you want? Oh, you put those guys over there? Well, I'm going to put my guys over here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really fun. Deployment uh, takes a little bit of getting used to as far as, each, you know, your army style. Yes. Um, so we are deployed. Um, if you guys could now... Well, Matt will start, and then I'll talk about Mark's side. If you could go and point to and talk about each unit. Okay. And... So this, <clears throat> I'll talk about each unit and what they do. Okay? So this unit right here are the Stark Outriders. They're cavalry, which means that they have three wounds per model, <laughs> and that they get a free maneuver before they before um, when they activate. Is there something that says all this? Or this yeah. Oh, unit, I'm getting, I'm getting that. There is a unit card that I've been telling Carl to go grab for a while now, <laughs> for like the last five or ten minutes, but he refuses to grab it. So. No, I don't. Um, so that is them. They also have different abilities. So they, their move is six. They have, they hit on fours in close combat. If they are at full ranks, they have eight dice. If they have one rank remaining. They get six dice, I believe. I have to double check that one. Um, they have a four up save, which means when I get hit, I'm going to roll a die, and on a four up, I don't take the damage. If I don't, I take the damage. Are you going off a of memory right now? Yes, I am. All right. um, and then their morale is a six up, which means when I take a morale or panic chest, I roll two dice. And I want to roll a six or higher naturally. I just rolled an eleven, by the way, Carl. Um, this does not go well for me in this game. I know. I'm it, yeah, you. it's gonna get worse. <laughs> what? Well, the dice or what? Well, you Matt's rolling dice. so high. Yeah. It's uh, just gonna get worse. <laughs> anyway, are we are we gonna use those really cool peacekeeper arcs when we play this game? Um, <laughs> thanks, Mark, for the <laughs> product placement. For the product the placement. placement. Maybe yeah. I still have maybe to talk about. Well. It. I haven't <laughs> finished talking about oh, this okay, game yet. Yeah. Still going. I'm trying so, to find my unit card. <laughs> so they have an order that says that <laughs> if they're attacked, <laughs> these unit card? Let me see. No. Oh. I can't see those. Oh, those are unit cards. I've got some. We got some. Oh, over he's here. got his. Okay, but cool. I don't have mine. So Stark unit cards. So, Jeez. anyways, um, they have an order that they can use once per round that says after they're attacked, they may perform a free retreat action. And what a retreat action is is you're gonna roll a die and add their movement. I rolled a five, by the way. He has not rolled uh, anything <laughs> less than a five already so far. Well, let, uh, let him get it out of the system. Yeah, and right. when I retreat, I don't pivot. I move forward, back, left, or right, and then I pivot on the spot. But that lets me get out of combat if I want to. Um, let's see here. What else? I think that's it. I think they might have one more ability off the top of my head, but I can't remember. So these are the Umbar Berserkers. They also move six because they're crazy people. Okay? Because they're crazy people. Because they're crazy people. Crazy people. Their dice hit on threes in close combat, and they work a little differently. At full ranks, they get eight attacks. If they're missing a rank, they get nine attacks. And on their last rank, they get ten attacks. So they can be very scary. Wow. Yeah. So, what else do they do? Oh, yeah. They have a five up save, which means in order to save, I need to roll five or higher. I rolled a three. Fantastic. So, hold on to that. Um, and they have a four up morale, which means I need to roll four or higher on two dice. Uh, what else? Oh, their attacks are sundering, which means it's minus one to the armor save of my opponent when I hit them. It's looking good, guys. So, it's a special ability that this unit has. Um, and then also my commander has abilities as well. First ability he has is he lets me bring his dog. Can't remember the dog's name. I'll cover the dog in a minute. Grey Wind. Grey Wind. Uh, second ability he has as a commander is he has an order that says when an enemy unit attempts to charge at long range. Now this is when they start at long range from the unit. I say, you know what? 
you suffer a disordered charge automatically, no matter what. Now I can give you Rob's card. But you have Rob's card? Um, I'm. I feel like. I feel like there's an ability I'm missing. No, no, that disordered charge one. That's it. I know, but is there not anything else that he has? No. Okay, so that's what he does. This is Grey Wind. He's a puppy dog. He's pretty good. So what he does is he gets he's just like he's just like Ghost. He has the basically the exact same stat line. That's one of them. But I have a but there are differences. So his attacks, he doesn't get to activate with Rob Stark. He has a move of six. He has two wounds. He gets a free maneuver. He hits on twos with two attacks. He has a three up save and a two up morale. And then, when if he attacks an enemy unit in their flank or their rear, that enemy becomes vulnerable. So ideally, I want to take this guy and get him in the side or the rear of somebody so I can put a vulnerable token on them so they have to re-roll their successful saves. And my last unit is the Stark Swarm Bros. Brothers, but I call them bros. Okay? Um, they have a movement of five. Happy days are here again. They have a movement of five. They hit on fours, and if I remember correctly, they get... Eight attacks at full ranks. Then it goes to six, and then it goes to three. I believe. You're, you're killing it, but the last one's actually five. Five. Wow, they get a lot of attacks. Yep. Okay. They have a four up save and a six up morale. Okay. Thank you for finally giving me the card. Mm -hmm. So, um, showing the unit cards now, these are included in the game, of course. Um, Matt's been doing great at just memorizing them. I found them finally. Finally. So. This is what he's talking about right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the last ability is uh, Stark Sworn Sword has is called Stark Fury. Now, what it does is that they may, they don't have to, but they can when they attack before the dice are rolled. I get to add one to the die rolls, and on sixes they gain critical blow, which means it counts as two hits instead of one hit. Okay. All this is Japanese right now, but we're going to go over it again when we start playing. Um, but. Unless you're Japanese. After right? I'm uh, done with the attack, so unless I have one rank level, left, I'm not gonna I suffer D3 wounds, which means I lose that many guys. I rolled a two. Um, they also have an attachment, which is an Umbar Champion. Whenever I attack in close combat with this unit, I unleash the Fury. If it has one or more destroyed ranks. I gain Vicious, which means it's minus two to the panic test after I deal wounds. We'll cover that in a minute. If, it, if, the, if I have two destroyed ranks, the defender also becomes panicked. And that's all my stuff on my side. Okay. So, do you want me to walk? Uh, we're going to walk through this here. You can do it. Yes. I have no idea what you're talking about. So, <laughs> on the far side over here, Mark has Veterans of the Watch. They're going to move five inches, and they're going to be hitting on threes in close combat. Uh, at full ranks, they have eight. At two ranks, they have seven. And at one rank, they have six. They have a three-up save and a five morale. And they have an order they can use once per round that says it's counterattack. After the enemy attacks me, before I roll defense dice, I can activate it. And for every successful save I make, the enemy must take a, 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 a save as well. Otherwise, they lose units. And here's the commander. Yep. Now, Jon Snow has two abilities as a commander. One is the bond with Ghost, which lets him move Ghost beforehand, before or after he goes. More importantly, once per round, when his unit passes a morale test, he can regain D3 wounds, which is why people hate him on the board. So recalling the once per round that he's said twice now, it's a it's that it's that teal horn um, counter, this little token. Um, that's what you use to signify that you have used that order. Mm -hmm. So when earlier when we talked about tokens, that's what that token's for. Mm -hmm. And you can see okay with the plastic on the guys? Yeah, it yeah. looks fine. Here's so this is um, if you I, I put in the chat, folks. If you're not watching the chat, that's fine. But War Council, the app in your app store has all these 
laid out really nicely, as well as a Song of, Song of Ice and Fire Builder.com abbreviated. Um, so that way you can reference stats and abilities much more clear. Okay. All right. So this is Ghost. This is his unit card. Ghost has a move of six. He gets two dice when he attacks, sitting on twos. He has a three up save. He has a two up morale. And when he attacks, as you can see right here, when he attacks, you don't get armor saves, and your opponent cannot use tactics cards for the rest of that turn. Not the round, just the turn. But that's why he gets to go before or after Jon Snow, because ideally, the ghost comes in, attacks, and then Jon Snow goes and attacks, but that way your opponent can't use any cards. Okay. Um, just as an interruption, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to catch these as we go. Um, turn versus round is different in many games. Mm -hmm. um, when, when it's your turn, you will activate a single unit of yours. That's your turn. And you're going to go back and forth taking turns. When all of the units are activated, you will do an end of the round step. So the round, the round contains all of those turns. Okay, so just to clarify, round versus turn. Yes. Thank you for the clarification. So Mark has two units of Sworn Brothers. They're exactly the same, so I'm just going to go over it once. So Sworn Brother moves five. He has an attack that hits on threes. He gets seven dice at full ranks, uh, five dice at two ranks, and four dice at one rank. He has a four-up save and a six-up uh, morale. And he has two special abilities when he attacks. He has critical blow, which means he rolls two. Uh, he gets an extra hit on a roll of a six. And he has sundering, which means it's minus one to my saves when he hits me. And that's all the units that are on the board. Question? Yes. So when you say a six up, uh, is that morale? Six? Yes. Meaning, uh, when they do a morale save, they have to roll a six on a six sided die? They have to roll, no. It's a two dice. And you have to roll a six or higher. Oh, got it. Okay. So Good yeah, question. most most things when these on the stats like a four up is referring to a single dice. Mm -hmm. The morale tests in particular contain a roll of two two d sixes, and you're trying to reach that number or higher. So yeah. so the save with the shield is one dice. Yes. And yeah. The so shield, so the shield. We'll get to the attacks in a, in a minute. But okay. basically, if he hits you, let's say with three hits, you would roll three dice. Okay. And with each of those armor saves, you try to get that shield number or higher. Huh. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll be reminding how the dice work and all those things when we get to it. Um, but now that we're deployed, we went over our units. Um, we did not go over these guys, but I think oh. we should save that for when they go. Yeah, yeah. Or do you want to do it I like to, So the way I like to do it, just FYI, and you don't have to do it this way. Um, Michael... <laughs> Um, another De La Russo. Um, John, I'm um, John. Jeez, what was gonna say? Oh, Michael has a great podcast, and he talks about if you want to do demos or how to do a demo. The way I like to do it personally is for brand new players like this is just talk about how to move units, mm -hmm. and we're gonna use round one as like a positioning practice. Basically, you're gonna get into position. Yeah. And then at the end of round one, we'll talk about the the non-combat units, which are which are these units here on the side of the board, and the tactics board, and your tactics cards. So round one, we're not even going to be using cards either. Um, and then in general, most game modes, I'm assuming this one as well, you don't score objectives in the first round. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So the objectives will be scored, but in the first round, they don't they don't matter. So at the end of round two, you'll start scoring points for holding that position. Okay. All right, so round one is purely... Your wording that was a little weird. Sorry, I, I do that sometimes. Uh, round one is purely a, a setup, a positioning um, mm -hmm. battle, right? Cat and mouse positioning. Um, Maybe talking about this card? Uh, that is just a summation of everything. Okay. So, so I'm actually going to talk about it right now. Mm -hmm. um, on the cheat sheet card... So we have the order one up first, the order side. No, I'll do the other side. Right. Yeah, we're not, we're, we won't talk about that side now. Um, so the top of this side of the cheat sheet card is a unit's actions, and specifically what that's referring to is your combat units, which are your your trays on the battlefield. 
And um, we're going to be focusing on maneuvering and marching for round one. Mm -hmm. And so as a general, how do you move? Um, let's go through that. All right, then. Okay. So we're going to do that for a round, but this refers to a turn, right? Each one of these is a turn. You do this um, a turn. So that is an action, which is involved as part of a unit's activation, which is part of your turn. Okay. Right. Um, so who's going first? I am. Matt is. So Matt, um, we'll say the game begins. Normally you would draw three cards unless you have an effect that hampers that, such as a demo, which we're not going to do that right now. Um, so Matt's going to say, okay, round uh, turn one begins. It's my turn. And uh, the first thing he needs to decide is which unit he'll activate first. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the Berserkers first. I'm going to do a March action. So what a march action is, is I don't get to pivot beforehand. I just move in a straight line forward. But the benefit of that is I get to move double my movement, whatever it is. Yeah. So I normally go 6 inches, so I would go 12. However, I'm going into the corpse pile, which is going to be minus 1 to my move. So I can move a total of 11 inches. So I have it at the 1 right now which means the farthest I can move is up to the end of the stick. Okay, so you can quick rate the loss by doing that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the terrain, what terrain keywords mean, there's a nice guide in the rule book. There's a nice cheat sheet. Is it the back? Or there's a page for it. Um, that way you can just quickly reference what each terrain does. We've just memorized it. So the corpse pile gives you a minus one to your total distance. So, yeah, like he said, Berserker has a speed of six, marching for double speed. Minus the one is 11. Mm -hmm. And now I get the pivot on the spot after I'm done with it. So I pivoted to kind of face the Swarm Brothers. Anticipating a charge. Yes. And then I'm going to put my activation token, which is a flag in this case, nearby. All right. So yeah. that's, that's a callback to the tokens we talked about earlier. The green one with the marching men is your activation token from mm -hmm. the starter box. We have these flags to represent mm -hmm. activation tokens instead. I'm going to put it there so that way the camera can see it. Okay, so you did the march, which is move two times speed and then a pivot. Yep. Okay. That's what I need. And it's your turn over now? And that is my turn. It's now your turn. Okay. Now, if I tried to do a charge, I wouldn't, would I be able to touch those guys? Um, I can't move. Because, I mean, I can't because we started so close, it, it's actually probably possible. But yes. um, I would like to focus on pos positioning for round one. Okay. So try to like gain advantage in position this this round. Um, so I just I just wanted you to see I want to see you practice moving a tray basically. So, <laughs> um, we could possibly do a charge later if you want to save if you want to save this guy for at the end of the round. Yes. And then we could we could go through a charge. Okay. So I think I'd like to um, march because you you get a lot of. Distance on a march. Yep, indeed. Uh, this tray here, so right. I can get on top of that. All right. So, no, no, don't move Ghost. Ghost oh, stays oh, oh, here. I'm just getting him out of the way. No, that's fine. You can't move him out of the way. He has to stay there. Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, so the move over here is five. Mm -hmm. So a double of that would be ten. Yep. I'll just put that here. Yep. Yes, I'm going to grab a train ruler and, and show the folks how I like to do it. Ten. Go to the 10. Now, it looks like you're going to be clipping the, this terrain here. Well, so, oh, let's see. When you move. Mm -hmm. So that means you're going to be at minus 1. Because if you, well, let's see here. That's okay. fine. All right, so just move straight forward. I'm going to hold this down and just move it, just push the tray forward. And all the way up to yep. 1. Yep. And uh, this is close quarters combat, guys, because my dining table exactly. isn't full four yep. feet. So there you go. <laughs> okay. And then I can pivot? You can pivot. So I'm going to go ahead and pivot. Okay. I'm going to hit this now. now well, that's fine, because you're done with your move. Okay. And, but I would probably just go to there, because that way you're not on top of it. Okay. So you're not on it or in it, so you don't. it's not restricting your movement for the future. And because of this, no one is going to be able to flank me. Correct. So Very it's good. going to be up front. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. And now you're going to take a little birdie. Your activation Bird. token? Birds. Yes. And on Mark's side, he's using crows for his activation marker. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. so I was just going to point this out. Let's give a little wait for the delay. Actually, I shouldn't wait. So this is a this is an up-close view of the tray. 
and how I like to move personally is putting the ruler in this fashion so that you're starting and ending with the back of the tray that way you can slide the tray up your distance so you're using the ruler as a guide you don't have to you can do front or back right yeah you can do it however you want but back to back seems to make sense okay your turn sir all right i'm going to move my pup my um puppy dog my puppy dog is going to move pivot correct terminology please sir you're doing a maneuver. So your turn begins, you'll activate Grey Wind. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing a maneuver, free maneuver. Okay. Because the dog, the, the, the dire wolf gets a, a free maneuver first. So I'm going to go from the 11 to the 5. Okay. And now I get to pivot on the spot. And then I'm going to go ahead and just. Pivot. And I'm just going to move right here. That's what I want to be. I want to be him to be right there. Uh, how did you get to do that extra little move to the sun? So his, he gets a free maneuver, and then I did another maneuver. So specifically what I did is I went like this. This is a good thing to show. So when you're maneuvering or pivoting, you're allowed to go over friendly trays. So I went to here, right, mm -hmm. and then I pivoted to like that. Oh, okay. Okay. And how does it, how do you know he gets a free maneuver? So it says on your card here in the hearts area. At the start of the spell's activation, and you make a free maneuver. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what mine does too. Yes. Okay. Right. Pardon this commercial interruption. Um, these guys were great in an event I threw. This is the mat that we're using. And I saw a post earlier about where to get mats. So gamemats.com. This is their no clue what this mat's called. But I use it as like as if we're in Valyria. Um, so anyways, there you go. It's done. Okay. I guess I don't want to do this guy. These guys over here. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't. So I can do the 10 in the front. And move them up this much. I'm going to work on a nice little dice box. Uh, but also I can pivot at the end. Mm -hmm. like you also want to be on top of the objective. So I would move a little bit further forward. Oh, you mean to, to just get a bit of it on yep, that token? because now there. you're claiming the objective. Okay. I don't think we, have, we can ever do that during the game, huh? Do what? Put a dice box on top of that. No. <laughs> no, but where's your really nice dice box with the cork? I couldn't find it. Um, That's too big for this game also. Oh, okay. You guys go ahead. Keep going. I'm going to work on it. Okay. okay. So my birds are... Yep. Birds are there. All right. So now, am I, am I allowed to charge... No, Matt. Okay. <laughs> so, have we, have we gone into detail? Is, has anyone maneuvered yet? Did you maneuver? Yeah. No, um, he's maneuvered up to here. The march or maneuver? He marched. Okay. And now I would like to try and charge him. Of course you would. Um, so, well, no, 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 you're fine. We're, let's do it. Let's let's go into okay. it. Okay. So, uh, but, but I just want to clarify for anyone watching. It's on your cheat sheet. It's in the rules. A maneuver, the advantage is... The pivot that you get to start with, so you get to completely reposition, but you only move your speed. The advantage of the march is you get to move double your speed, but you don't get that initial pivot, right? So you got to go straight forward. Um, so hopefully we've shown that. I think you did with Greywind, right? The maneuver. Yes. Okay. So we've done a little bit of that each, and let's go into a charge now. With a charge action, there are prerequisites that you need to have to be able to charge. Um, charging is just everyone's favorite thing because there's lots to it. Uh, I'm going to go over the basics. So I'll let you do it. All right. So prerequisites. Uh, first off, the unit that you're going to activate, go ahead and, and signify that. This one. Um, that unit needs to not be engaged. So it needs to be free. Okay. Uh, second, uh, it needs to be able to see your target. So that's the front arc, which it can. Yep. And so I'm, on, I'm, a, on a, a tree in front of me. I can't see me. That tree does not block line of sight. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This is the only thing in the game that blocks line of sight. 
Um, and other units block line of sight. That's true. Um, so you do need to be aware of your line of sight, which is if you look on a tray. So let's. I don't think we talked about line of sight. Yet. I did a little bit. Oh, you did. I did. The line of sight's in the front arc. Only. Yeah, but so the rule book gives a nice, nice pictures. Um, hopefully you can see this. But there's these little markings here to show what each arc is. So with the front arrow, that's your front line of sight arc. Is everything in front of you within the uh, those lines? What, are the, what am I trying to say? Exaggerated or extended? Mm -hmm. So these lines continue out into space, and that's your front arc. These are your flank arcs, and this would be your rear arc back here. Okay. So line of sight is front arc. Can you see them? Yes. Okay. So so second or third qualification is um, are can you reach them? Yes, because you can't declare a charge if you can't actually reach them. Right. So a charge move is going to be your movement plus a d6 roll. So my max possible move is 5 plus a 6 on a d6, Yep. which means I need to be within 11 inches, which I am. Okay, so that's a checkbox. And the last but not least is can your physical tray align, meaning can, does it fit? If you successfully charge, do you have space to put your tray? It looks like I do. Absolutely, in this but case. But oftentimes you want to test this out with a spare tray on the side mm -hmm. to see if the tray will actually fit in place. And this also means, in game terms, if another unit is already fully engaged with your target, even if there is like some space on the on the edge of the tray showing, if you're if it's fully engaged, you're not allowed to charge it. Okay. And we'll talk about that when he aligns. Yeah. But all right, go ahead. So what I we, I like to do is I like to discuss before I actually do the charge how far I need. So there's no dis there's no question about it. So it looks like I'm gonna need a seven or an eight because you need to get all the way and touch their base. Um, and that's a that's any a part of it. any part of it. Any yeah, corner? that's yeah. a wonderful pro tip that Matt just brought up. Talk about what you're trying to do with your opponent. That way there's no like weird situations of, mm -hmm. wait, what are you doing there? Yeah. Like that's not. So can I think we're going to agree that I need, it looks like I need a seven. Okay. And your movement is a five. So mm -hmm. you have to roll a two or higher. Yes. And in this case, you don't actually do that. Um, he's just getting an idea because before he rolls this dice, he is allowed to pivot to try to close that little hair of an inch that he's away from. Oh, there's something um, you need to mention. Not that that the cards. The oh, cards. I'm using old cheat sheet cards. Um, they've been updated. There is a pivot. It's a special kind of pivot because you have to keep looking at your target. Mm -hmm. All right, so in the initial print of the starter, it didn't show pivot on your cheat sheet. But it's in the rule book. But it's there. It's in the rule book, and it does cause confusion. So the later boxes on the, the cheat sheets actually do allow you to pivot on the cheat sheet, but in the starter, the first one, it's not on the cheat sheet. Right. Which is unfortunate. I don't so, think pivoting is going to actually get me closer. Okay. But so I will do so. I will show it right here. So I'm pivoting on the spot. Oh, this okay, well, it's just a little bit in the way. And it's still going to be seven inches no matter what I do. <laughs> so we're just going to go. I think it's seven inches. If the if the chat wants to correct me on seven inches, feel free. Oh, right. we're not too concerned. Okay. So I'm going to need a seven, which means I'm going to add my move of five plus whatever I roll. Now, I'm going to mention this now, that if I was, like, right next to him, even though the charge is guaranteed, I still need to roll because on a roll of a one, I get a disordered charge. Yes. There's which means I don't get to re-roll attack dice. And I don't get to play tactics cards. Yeah. So in generally speaking, you gotta roll your charge dice no matter what. No matter because, what. Because there's there's a bad thing that happens with a one. So. And we'll talk about that. Let's see if I get there. I rolled a six. Oh, nice. Oh. So I'm gonna get there. <laughs> Matt's still on his roll streak. So <laughs> my guys surge forth. Nope. Don't say that term. Okay. <laughs> they they touch there. They charge. They they charge and I touch. Yes. So now it is my job as the attacker to align with my defender at either a hundred percent on, fifty percent on, or fifty percent on. Because the box is oh I can go there. Yeah, I can move the box a little bit too. We're just gonna keep it at a hundred. Perfect. For now. 
Um, so as you travel with your charge distance, you add your speed in the roll of the charge die. Um, you move in a straight line. So if you reach your target, success, which in this case is what Matt, happened with Matt. But if you come up short, it's a failed charge, and you would make a panic test, which we'll talk about later. Um, but that sucks. And you, you don't get to pivot if you fail your charge. You're just stuck there in that weird position. So he successful charge. He is now aligned. Um, so if you could show 50% alignment one more time. If, if this unit was already like this and another unit was trying to charge in, that would be allowed. But since he's 100% aligned, there is no space for him to charge in with another unit. On the front flank. On the front flank. We haven't talked yeah. about side or rear yet. Yeah. So I'm going to attack, and I'm going to use my Stark's Fury. Just a note, uh, if you guys want to go deep into charging and alignment, I have a charging and alignment chat in my channel. And I because I just realized I skipped over the defender's uh, line of sight and how you how you decide what side you're attacking, etc. It goes into super detail. Charging and alignment chat in Peacekeeper Games YouTube channel. Just it should be the the second latest video I did. So hop in there if you're interested in all the nuances. Okay. All right. So now that he's aligned, uh, <clears throat> the last step of a of a charge if you're successful is attacking. Okay. So I'm going to use Stark's Fury, so I'm going to get plus one on all my dice rolls, and I get extra hits on a six. Okay. Um, yep. So uh, let's talk about uh, resolving an attack. Um, there are steps. So for, before you use your ability, we'll go through that. So the first step in resolving an attack is gathering your dice pool. So if you look on a stat card, which I'll use. Sure. Yeah. Uh, unit card, stat card. Um, he's going to use this melee attack, which is designated by the sword. The big white number is what you want to see when you roll. On each dice. On each dice. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's a four up. So when Matt attacks, he wants to see a bunch of fours, fives, and sixes. The green, yellow, and red are how many dice you roll, depending on how healthy your unit is. And there's three numbers because there's three there's three ranks in a unit. So as long as there's at least one model in the third rank. He gets green dice. He's fully healthy as far as the uh, attack roll goes. Um, so he's going to gather eight dice right now. But before he rolls them, he's going to use this ability. So sorry for interrupting. That's fine. Can I see? Yeah. So the ability is called Stark's Fury. And it says that I get to add one to all my dice rolls. And six is cause an additional hit. Mm -hmm. However, I hurt myself afterwards. Mm -hmm. So... I'm gonna roll the dice. I'm. Um, are you fine, or do you want to do a little um, containment for I'm dice? I'm fine right here. Okay. So, I get to re-roll all my misses because I made a successful charge. Normally, when you attack, you don't get to re-roll, but because I made a successful charge yeah. and I didn't get a disorder charge, I get to re-roll my misses. So the the big that? the big benefit is just. A blatant rule, period. The big benefit in charging instead of getting charged is that re-roll for those attack dice. Well, plus you're hitting them first, right? Yeah. It's, it's something to attack bonus if you guys are Attack interested. bonus. Okay, so on the cheat sheet. Charge bonus. Re-roll any attack dice. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you charge in, not only are you weakening them before they hit you, but you also get to re-roll your misses. Is that the only miss you have? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I am. Um, so, once again, my dice rolls are ridiculous. Um, I got a total of 12 hits after it's all said. Oh my god! So, I get 1, 2, 3, 4, and critical blow for 6s is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So, so uh, we get, we're getting the... Uh, the full dice mat mat dice effect on camera. So here's twelve. These aren't my dice, by the way, and you saw me roll. No, this you're you're just, just in touch with you you commune with the I'm dice in, gods. I'm in tune with the dice gods. So, okay, so now I have to defend. You have to defend. Okay, so he has landed uh twelve successful hits with his attack. Well, um so now dice. you pick up twelve dice or you can do two rounds of six dice if you want. I gave you twelve dice though, if you want to. 
and you give them a good shake and you try to reach that shield number of that unit that's being hit. Okay, my shield is four. So you want to see fours and higher. Okay. Alright, I got some in here, but not all. This <laughs> is quite a few that I miss. Alright. Alright. I got four saves. Okay, so you're going to lose... Swap the dice. <laughs> so we're swapping the dice. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So you're going to lose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight models. From yep. So each the each failed yep. save is the, a loss of... Is, is a wound. And in this case, in infantry, one wound equals one model. Yeah. Now, I'm going to do two things now after he... Well, is that, have, didn't you do, haven't you done enough? Well, I have to hurt myself <laughs> still. First yes, time. hurt yourself. Uh, so do the, it. Fir the first, he has to take a panic test. Yes. Um, okay. okay. And this is a key concept, if, especially if you're a Lannister, which I love to play myself. Um, whenever you're attacked, period, whether you suffer wounds or not, you will um, have a panic test. In this case, because you suffered wounds, you must roll for it. If you did not suffer wounds, you automatically pass your panic test. But you got wounded, so you're going to take two dice. Oh, I just want to show off the, the mid alignment there. So so in, in Mark's case, we're finishing the attack. Now that you've been wounded, you're going to suffer a panic test. So you're going to take two dice. And and this is because of an attack, not because of wounds itself. Okay. Oh, so look over here. For the flag. I need a six plus. That's right. But you're on a weirwood tree. Oh, how so, about the tree? So uh, when you roll these two dice, you're going to add one to the roll. That's it? Yep. Mm -hmm. After getting all the death? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. You're fine. All right. Now, after that's done, I now suffer D3 wounds. So I, no, no, that's when you roll your sixes. Well, I have to roll a D3 first. Uh, it's a D3. It's so a D3. Highest oh, is a three. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I lose two dice. All right. And wow. that's because of the Stark Fury ability. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm feeling pain here. Yep. Yep, that hurt. But the objective is still yours because you claimed it first. All right. <laughs> and it's actually a perfect example for a man. <laughs> yes. That'll be the first move he does. Um, so let's, let's, oh, I kind of want to talk about it now, but I kind of want to finish, no, yeah, I guess we could talk about it now. The, the NCUs, we'll talk about it at the beginning of the next round. Because uh, he still has, you still have two units left to activate. Oh, he's going first. He's going first. Perfect, first. okay. I wanted to make him, I want to make sure he got him. No, he's fine. Okay. So, speaking of things, uh, <laughs> it's your turn, and... I want to charge these guys into him. Right? Perfect. Yeah. So we check line of sight. So I will get. Uh, okay. I'm gonna get my laser, freaking laser beams. What do we need a laser for? Uh, the check line of sight and the check alignments and things like that. Because so, sometimes people debate about what flank if you're in a flank or not. Right. So um, to determine where you're gonna end up like which side of the target that you're attacking, mm -hmm. like where are you going to place your tray? You actually look at his point of view. So he's looking this way, right? Right. So what we do is we make a line. You can do it with a ruler too. I don't know if the camera can see that actually. Probably not. So let's do a ruler. So you're going to, you're going to extend his line of sight out. Yeah, most people have lasers. And, <coughs> and the ma majority of where your tray is, I'm going to try to rest it. Yeah. So in this example, most of your tray is in the front mm -hmm. side. So mm -hmm. you're going to end up in the front. But if you were just slightly, you know, if you were slightly over here, you would be attacking his flank, which would give you a little, little extra bonus. But that's how you determine where you end up, is his point of view. Right. But if I tried to, let, let's suppose I could even attack him in the flank. That means my flank is exposed to all these guys. Correct. Right? Which is not a good thing. Not a good not No bueno. Thing. No bueno. All right, so let's do um, basically a charge. Okay. Let's so speed is five mm -hmm. plus a d six. Yep. Right. So here's a here's a good actually a perfect example of, and you can see it on the camera too. It's nice. So right now, if you move from here to here, you're gonna hit him, right? Yep. That that distance is six about and five and a half, which would be a six that you need. But because the first step is pivoting, 
you can pivot on your center. And now where you're going to contact is from here to here. Which is closer. Which is a five. So you close the gap mm. by pivoting first. All I have to do is touch his tray. Yep. Exactly. And then you magically jump to the right position. <laughs> that's, that's an inside joke. <laughs> but I, so I automatically will get there, but I have to roll the dice for the charge. Yes. Because... I could have a fail charge. Exactly. Or you could, uh, have, a you could have a disorderly charge. charge. Disorderly charge. Which is also on the cheat sheet. Oh, yeah. So we're on this side. Disorderly charge. If the attacker rolls one, clear charge. So you get there. All right. I'm there. So. And I'm just going to do the half thing. So yep. You're doing the half thing. Yep. In fact, that's the only thing I can do. That's right? the only you can do. So we're going to make sure everything's lined up properly. There we go. Perfect. So that's the proper lineup right okay, there. So now that you have aligned. You will go into resolving an attack. I must crush him like a bug. Yep. Right. So how many attacks do you get? Good question. Um, I get seven. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Four, five, six, seven. Uh, the sixes get two hits. Mm-hmm. And a sundering. Defenders suffer minus one to their defense save rolls. Yep. All right. And you got the charge off, so you get to re-roll your hits. And what do you, what numbers are you looking for? Um. Oh, um, I get to re-roll my misses, right? Yep. Okay, I am looking for a three or mm -hmm. yeah, three more, three or more. Right? Okay, three plus there. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can do a mat roll here. Oh, I'm seeing some ones here. That's good though. You get three roll those. Okay, so I got four of them here. You get three roll them. Three more. I get three roll because it was a successful charge. Yep. Oh, I get. I missed two. I so five hits. hits. Uh, there's a six in there. So okay. that's an extra hit. So that's going to be six hits. So normally I need fours, but because you're sundering, I'm going to need a five. Right. So. I see some ones and twos over there, Matt. So I'm going to make three of them, <laughs> and I'm going to fail three. Why? I'm seeing sixes everywhere. Except yeah. over here. Uh, do you want to trade dice? <laughs> I have more dice. For I, I can trade dice if you I want. Actually, I actually have the uh, Night's Watch dice in here. I this, no, these, these are fine. Yeah, I I didn't expect to win this game. Just play it. Right. Awesome. So now because I lost guys, I have to take a panic test, and I'm in short range of the corpse pile. So that's going to be a minus one. Oh. But I'm also in short range of the wear tree, so it's going to be a plus one. So I need a six, just a six. Oh, got it. And, okay. Was me being near the course pile should have been no, part of any of you're fine. Okay. So I rolled an eight. <laughs> okay. So. No, no panic for you. No panic for me. Okay. And that's it. I'm done. Okay, now it's my go. I have one unit left, and we're just going to go ahead and take a free maneuver with the horsies first. You get a free maneuver with cavalry? <laughs> I do! <laughs> cavalry! So we're going to go from the two to the eight. And then I'm just going to march up the board. Why are you doing that? Yeah. What's well, your plan? I want to be next to the dog. I want to go pet the dog. You can go pet the dog with yeah. the cavalry? Something like that. Something like that? Something like that. With the horse's feet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to march up. Uh, so I can march up 12. That's just rude. Listen. Oh, no. I'm clipping it. So I can only go 11. So I'm going to clip the corpse file. Oh, well. Oh, only 11. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cavalry is fast, if you haven't noticed in this game. They have no idea what's in this game. So, so I only go to there, and now I get to pivot, so I'm going to pivot to face the doggy, because the doggy goes next. Okay. So as as Mark is taking a quick uh, break, um, if you guys aren't familiar with the theme, we'll just talk about like how the general sense of armies play. So Starks are fast and hit hard, and get angry as they die. The Night's Watch, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> but uh, the Night Watch is all about, they're a little more elite. 
they hit hard and they heal through everything. They heal so all day. So you might feel bad that he only had, he lost eight guys here. Don't worry about that. <laughs> we'll show you what's going to happen next round. So oh, you're yeah. gonna make me How's our activations looking? Uh, he has one left. Okay. What are these guys doing away over here? I ran that way because <laughs> I want to go pet the dog. Holy mackerel. But it's your activation. I so. go to the bathroom and these guys are in my bathroom. <laughs> Listen, listen, you ever hop a fence and go pet a dog before? Nope. Right. Really? You should try it sometime. No, thanks. <laughs> Dang. Um, that's um, bad advice. Don't that's listen. That's great advice. No, it's not. It's wonderful. Um, okay, wow. I never expected that. So what's going through your mind, Mark? Um, my dog's in danger. Okay. Um, well, you get the move now. And now these guys could get... I don't know. I, I, I don't know how fast he can go. but He can go he, a total he, of 18 inches. That's a little exaggeration. No, it's not. Well, can he can he get to the back of these guys? Not in his next turn. No. Um, not with the way things are positioned. I don't think so. Can he hit me in the flank? No. Like uh, this, right? Uh, I think I might be able to, but... We'll call it a no, because you yeah. would have planned better if you knew, right? Yeah. So, we'll All say. Right. We'll say no. Um, we'll say no. All right, so let's go ahead and move the wolf. Uh, get him out of harm's way. But man, actually, <laughs> yeah. Do you have any advice for the newbie? Oh, um, enjoy the game. Yeah, can I bite his cavalry. You so, can. You get a time. So I'm me. extending his line of his rear line of sight here, and um, with six inches, he can totally get his. So he can he can rear attack you next round, for sure. He can. Yes. I, I, I thought I eyed that. I eyeballed right. it. All right. Um. So um, there's a couple things you can do. One is you can just park the doggo over here so that – Basically kind of block, you know, right. saving these guys from a blanket. I mean, of, in fact, even where he is isn't, isn't too terrible. Um, but then you're just waiting to get charged, right? Right. And your dog will probably die. Another thing you can do is tie him down. And what sucks about what sucks about these guys is they don't get tied down. So in general advice is when you engage a unit, they're stuck there. They can only attack or retreat, and that that takes up their turn mm -hmm. normally. With the Stark Outriders, if you attack him, he gets a free retreat. So it, it would just help him out. So he can retreat in the direction. That... Like if you come and attack him to tie him down, lock yeah. him in. Right. He gets a free retreat after the attack. So it's just helping him out, really. It's not. Really but he could he could actually retreat in the direction I don't want him to go. Um, no, but I guess he has to retreat. In the, oh, he can retreat forward. He can retreat orthogonally, but it's not through you. He can't retreat forward. Okay. Right. So if if you got him here, yeah. I guess he can go this way and then come around, right? Oh, I guess I guess that is making it a little bit more difficult, but yeah. I'm I'm just saying with the outriders, it's hard, way harder to tie them down. Um, so yeah. Maybe you should just do that. You should just charge him right there. Well, I can't charge him. Why not? Because I have to... Well, you get a free maneuver first. Oh, wait a yeah, second. Yeah, Ghost, is, about Ghost that. is like cavalry. At the start... No, it's not that it's um, an activation, though. Or is it now an activation? Because he's already been activated. It's your turn, right. so uh, he's your only guy left, so you're going to activate him. Okay, so you're going to say, I'm activating Ghost. And at that moment is when you get your free maneuver. Free maneuver? Yeah. Before you decide what to do. All right, cool. Let's try this then. So, like, what's don't... what's good about that is I'm gonna mark his where he's at. Mm -hmm. Is you could do something like get in his flank. That's what I was gonna do. Yeah. But remember what I said? He gets a free retreat afterwards, right? Right. So he would just retreat this way, and then now he's here. All right. Right. So, in this it's case, gonna, you want to block his path. Be a funnel. Yeah. And the bonuses that you get for the flank. Don't really matter because Ghost just does automatic wounds. He doesn't get to save. <coughs> All right. So, so, so you yeah. know, he gets a free maneuver, which is basically oh, a pivot. Just start like Let's this. Just do the pivot. Okay. Bam. And then um, you're already in. You still need to roll though. Yes, you do. Yeah, you still need to roll the dice. Uh, I haven't charged it. I, I don't have to roll for the maneuver, right? Nope. Okay. No, no, no. The maneuver but now for the is charge part. I have to roll. Yep, so you have to roll. Let's see if I have a happy one. Okay. You do. Alright. So now when you're aligning one of these smaller bases up, you want to handle this? Sure. 
when you okay, roll one. So you did. He gets there. There's no reason to pivot because you're so close. So the, I mean, there it, there could be reasons to pivot even if you're close to avoid terrain or something. Mm -hmm. But in this case, there's nothing. Whoop, you go straight in, right. you contact. In this case, you're already flush. That's nice. But you're going to line up. So this would be 100%. The, the center of the front tray to the center of the front tray. In this case, it's the front tray. Center to center. Because mm -hmm. um, I believe the, score, the large solo trays don't have arrows. But most trays have arrows. You can disconnect it. 50% when you're charging with the solo or with any tray is the side of the charging unit aligns to the center of the target. So it would be like that. Okay. Now, what, what, there's got to be an advantage, I guess, when I go here, here, or here, right? In his retreat, I want him to have to go around me, right? So right. If I, if I put it here, he can't fit through here. Exactly. Right. So he's, if he's going to go around me, he has to go way down yeah, here. Exactly. Right. All right. So you went there. Okay. That's that. I did my charge. So now I attack. Yep. Right. Uh, this model has two. All right. So, all right. So I just do the attack. Um. Yeah. You can go through the steps. So two, first, you gather two, the dice. Two dice. Okay. Two green dice. Uh, I attack on a two plus. Oh, you gotta be! You get to re-roll them. No, oh, yes. I love Did he do snake eyes? He, yeah, I know you got a two and a one. Oh, two, so. <laughs> two twos. Well, well, that's what you need. <laughs> so I need another one. Warm marker. those hands up or something. Uh -huh. two. Oh, so I'm gonna put one moon marker down, and then Carl's gonna get me a second one. Well, you're gonna fail your panic test by millions. So. Well, I might because I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm a morale of six. But I'm within short range here, so I now need a 7. So for all the viewers, Ghost does not allow those Outriders to try to block. So when Ghost did two hits, they just became yeah. wounds. Oh, and let's comment also on the modifiers. So I say I need a 7 to pass, which is technically true. However, the modifier goes to, to whatever I roll, not my value of 6. So I need a 6 to pass... And then whatever I roll is going to be a minus one. Correct. So, just to clarify, so I'm going to roll a nine. <laughs> so. So that becomes an eight. That becomes an eight. Which is one more than a seven. Which is going to be a pass. So I pass on a six up. Yeah. And when so, someone when, when someone fails a pan test, we'll get into it more. Yeah. So I'm now going to use my order to run away because I'm a little girl. Um. What, I don't get a chuckle out of that? Uh, I'm, I'm running away like a little... Come on now. No, that's that's the, that's what they do, man. That's I know, but I make a joke here and I don't oh. get anything from it. No, nope. You're just like, nah, man, nope. nah. I'm multitasking, so my brain is pretty much frozen. Sorry. So I'm going to run... Oh, I rolled a six. So I'm going to run away 12 inches in any given direction that so, I want. So retreat steps. So he used an order. On the Outriders, which mm -hmm. is Swift Retreat, I believe. Swift Retreat. So once the attack is done, he he takes that order token and says, I'm using my order. Arya didn't run. <laughs> nice. Um, he's using his order to make a free retreat action. So what that does is the first thing you do is you roll a dice, and which is what he did. And then you decide which direction you go. And did you already decide that? I did. Okay. Do you also pivot? Or no, I don't get to pivot. I get um, to move. So it's a it's a straight orthogonal choice. So straight back or straight left or right in this case. Do you still take these hits? Yes, I do. I just need to move out of the way. Oh, okay. Move first and then take the hits. No, no, like they they're still there, but they're, I just need to move them because they were here. He I'm puts moving. he puts them by the side of the tray instead of on your tray. Well, when does he die? What do you mean? I thought he dies for each one. No, that's that's for infantry. So in infantry's good great question. So when you take a wound with an infantry model or a unit, it's one wound per model. Right. With the cavalry, cavalry, it's you need three wounds to remove a horse. Oh. Okay. Right. But it's the same amount of wounds needed to kill the entire thing. It's twelve. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So I get to move a total of twelve. Now I don't have to move the full amount. Oh, so, you've got to be kidding! You're gonna so, come behind me. Over so here. I'm gonna run over to here. <laughs> this is not good. To right <laughs> here, and I'm just gonna stay there. Now you, after I run away, can now do a free pivot. Or no, you stay still. 
No, no, no. He does. He does a free pivot? Yeah. Okay. So so you roll the dice, you choose your direction, you move orthogonally straight in that direction, and when the unit decides to stop, he can the retreating unit can pivot, which I think he did. Yep. And then the unit that was disengaged, which is Ghost in this example, the dire wolf, gets a pivot as well if he wants. Okay. Pivot. Yeah, which is just turning to face. Yeah, we've got it. Um, at this point, I don't know if I want to pivot because I mean it it's, it's kind of unnecessary in this particular okay. scenario. You trying to get past him? I might be. Fine. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna stay right where I am. Sounds good. Because so. I can't go. Back. It's just a pivot. So yeah, it's just a pivot. Be here, right? That's the best. Spot. I'll stay right there. All right. So with that done. We check if there's any more activations. Oh, yeah. There are none. So we're going to pick up activation tokens. We're going to pick up order tokens, if we have any. Uh, at this step, we haven't done it yet, but anybody on the, end, the, the tactics board gets cleared off. And then I think that's it, because we draw cards at the beginning of the round, right? Okay, so are we... In no, 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 no. We're doing the end of the round now, right? So round before three. we end the round, we're going to go through NCUs. Okay, so that's that's on you. All right, so um, we're going to go with Mark first. Okay. So, Mark? Yep. Present. We just did a whole bunch of shenanigans on the battlefield. Yeah. We, got a whole bunch we of maneuvered, we here. marched, we charged. Oh, they're coming back. Don't worry. We retreated. Okay. The only thing we haven't done yet is make an attack action, which you can only do if you're already engaged. Okay. Okay, so we, we'll go through that this next round for sure. Um, but instead of choosing one of these guys to go, you can choose one of these units to go. These are your non-combat units. To go where? I'm, I'm explaining oh, right now. You're fine. Um, I, I want those questions, but um, I'm going to go through my whole spiel. So these are the non-combat units. They are units just like these. So when it's your turn, you activate one unit. You can choose anyone on the battlefield or these guys, okay? Okay. The only action, though, they can do is choosing one of these tactic zones on the tactics board. Okay. Okay, they have a benefit to each one that you claim mm -hmm. when you claim it. Mm -hmm. And your non-combat characters here also have, like, special effects that they do. Um, I'm going to go through the obvious first choice for you um, because it's that obvious because you don't want Matt to block your zone. Because only one guy can go here. So if you go to a spot, now he can't go to that spot. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, a a worker placement type of deal here where you're claiming the zone you want to hold. Because for the rest of the round, you now control this. And I'll talk about that in a second of why that's important. Is the first round over? Um, yeah. Technically, no. Okay. okay. I, I'm, I'm doing this as part of the first round. I just wanted you to get familiar here. Oh, okay. All right. But in a normal round... I could have moved one of those guys first. Yes. Okay. Yes, and you probably will. And I'll I'll talk I'll talk about why. Gotcha. Um. Uh. So what was I doing? So you're gonna so as the only action you can do. So let's say Mark Mark's gonna activate Amon. Okay. okay. Then his only action is to claim a zone. Got it. You're gonna pick the wealth zone, which is the coin purse. I'm gonna give you your own personal tactics board as a reference. Mark. Thank you. I need that. Yeah. yeah. Cause I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that one there for the camera. And you can refer to this one. Okay, you're welcome. You still have the three ones. Oh. Okay, so we're going to do that effect first. So you're going to pick a unit of yours and restore three room, wounds to it, which uh -huh. is That's the only one. one that could benefit is that one right there. Right. Actually, I'm sorry. To, to get the full effect, we're going to do Amon first. Um, Amon has an ability. Oh. Yeah. This is part of okay. the first round or the second round? This is part of the first round. All right. So when Amon claims a zone, which he just did, you may restore up to one wound plus an additional wound for every rank that's destroyed. So one plus one plus one. So three. So three from Amon first. Plus three over here. That's six. Exactly. So you can go ahead and throw six guys back in. All right. <laughs> Loving that. Yeah. And that is the Amon Wealth Zone um, annoyance of the Night's Watch okay. right there. Amon's my new friend. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's pretty great. Or does it have to be criminalized? Um, we go in oh, this direction okay. because if you have an attachment, uh -huh. he'll be the last model removed, gotcha. the attachment. Okay. 
Um, so now if you could go ahead and draw the top card of your tactics deck. I'm going to talk about that. Hopefully it makes sense. Uh, sure. So I'm going to go through a card again. So remember, so in round two, you'll have a hand of cards, right? Okay. But I'm going to talk about the synergy here. Okay. So on this card specifically, there's an extra bonus for if you control the crown zone. This one here. Yes. So if you have this in your hand and you're thinking, I want to get the full effect from this card, maybe early in that round, you'll claim the crown zone because mm -hmm. now you control it. And then when you play this, you have that extra effect. When do you play the cards? It's it's written on the cards. Oh, okay. Every card has its own timing. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to talk about that real quick. The synergy between cards and tactics board is is huge. Would you be able to, to talk about each one of these zones? Sure. So uh, first up is I believe it's called the crown zone. Mm -hmm. There's actually terms. There's a little crown. Yeah. Um, it's that's that's your fireball. That's your zap. That's your lightning bolt. Meaning. You get to choose one enemy unit, and they just take a panic test. And they can be anywhere on the board? Yes. Okay. And they're going to suffer minus one to that roll. Okay. So as an example, we'll try to zap the Outriders. So you'll okay. say, uh, I'll choose the crown zone. I'll target this enemy unit. Matt will have to roll two dice, to, and he's normally trying to get to six. Mm -hmm. But whatever he rolls is going to have a minus one from the crown and a minus one from this corpse file. Oh. So you're trying to make them flee. Right, and or, so he's already got two wounds, so I just need one more for a guy to die. For yeah. a model, yeah. Yeah, good. Um, so that's kind of like your zap. We call it zap in the game, where you take the crown space or zap in somebody. Okay. This is your heal space, the wealth zone, restoring three runes. Mm -hmm. And you also get to remove a condition token. We talked, we kind of touched on those earlier, mm -hmm. but you don't have a condition token, so you're fine. The middle space here is the tactic zone, I think. <laughs> uh, you get to draw two extra tactic cards. And then you place a condition token on an enemy unit, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, the fourth zone is a free attack. And the last zone is a free maneuver or retreat. Um, and once again, once you place your guy here, you now control that zone, which would give you, sometimes give you added effects from your cards. Okay. All right? Okay. So that was Mark's activation over here, so you can go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take the free attack with Caitlyn. Okay. So I'm going to use Caitlyn's ability first. She's going to attach to a unit. I'm going to attach to this unit here. Can you lay it face down for the yes, camera? Yes, I can. Thank you. So what she does is she has two abilities. One, when she attaches, she removes condition tokens from the unit. Just one. There's none there. Uh, the second ability is that when this unit attacks, they attack at the highest die value. What is that? So if you notice, I'm down a rank. So I lose attacks, oh. but she says, you know what, no. So you're going to attack with the highest value. At the green zone. Yeah. It, got it. Normally the green zone, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now they're going to attack the unit that just got healed, because that wasn't fun. Um, <laughs> it wasn't fun for me either. Yeah. No. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to get eight dice, and I'm going to go ahead and activate Stark Fury again. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. So I don't get the reroll, but I'm looking for three. Just question: the, the the start fury is only one per round? No, it's not in order. It's not, okay. it's not in order. So the little green horn, the teal horn, those are orders. This is just an every attack ability. Oh. Okay. So I got a total of <laughs> more good rolls. <laughs> five hits. So no, oh no, critical blow. So that's nice. Yep. And it wasn't a charge, so no rerolls. Nope. So oh, okay, that's nice. Let me look at this. I don't. I have to uh, do a four plus in each one of these. Yep. And I have to roll five dice. Five dice. Now I have an ability after oh, you do your. And I'm on the tree. Does that mean anything? Nope. Mm -hmm. No, that comes into effect later. Oh, you have vicious. I have vicious. Nice. So you're gonna lose two dice. Okay. So the four saved, and I have these two that mm -hmm. died. Okay. And they have to come off the back row. Yep. Okay. Now then, you're gonna take a panic test. Now when I'm missing a rank. You're going to take minus two to your panic test, but plus one because of the tree. So it's minus one to your, your test now. Okay, can you explain why the minus two? He, he so has an attachment. I have an, I have an attachment that gives me vicious if I'm missing a rank. 
Ah. And Vicious says that it's minus two to the panic test. Ah. But you're on the wear tree, so it's plus one. So it's a minus one. Mm -hmm. So I need a six plus, now I need a seven plus. Yep. Two dice. Yep. And you got a seven. Yes. So he's fine. Perfect. Right. Now I lose two dice. Alright. Killing yourself softly. Mm -hmm. So that was Caitlin. Mm -hmm. That was Caitlin's activation. Now it's Mark's turn. So Mark, you have this guy left. This is all you have left here. Okay. And are you? Oh, can I? Oh, let's use these. This one is taken. And this so, one's taken. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Sure. Uh, so yeah. I'll tell you about his ability first. Oh yeah, let me look this card. Okay, go ahead. Okay. And you can read it out loud if you want. Okay, so this is. Uh, Bowen Marsh, mm -hmm. when Bowen claims his own on a tactics board, you may look at the top two cards of your tactics deck. Place one of those cards in your hand and the other on the bottom of the tactics deck. Okay, so that, that just gives me cards. but it gives this is fat. Cards are really good. But can I play them right now during this? Um, Sure. Uh, we'll see what you draw. Depends on the card, really. All right, so let's do this for the camera. We've got two cards here. Well, you need to claim a zone. You need to pick a zone oh, yeah, first. Pick a zone yep. Because okay. he, he, he does that when he lands. All right. Or claims, I should say. Can attack. So I'll, let's go ahead and. Uh, before you go, Mark. Can I um, just make him. Since he's gone to five, should I just have him make a panic attack? That's actually good. Uh huh. Number one? Yeah. Person? I mean. Because he suffers minus one to their roll, too. Indeed. All right, I'll do that. Bam. Okay, mm -hmm. so now you can do your bow and marsh. Okay, so then uh, when he, he takes a claim, claims a place, take the top two cards, which is this one and this one. And this is this is an addition to your hand, so if both of you guys want to draw three right now, and that's fine. Draw three. Yeah, so, so Bowen's ability is adding cards to your hand. Okay, so right. So now that we're getting into card territory, we'll fill your hand up. So we should have had three cards. Should have had three. Okay. Yeah. Now the two cards I drew are exactly identical, so it doesn't matter which one I keep and which one I <laughs> put underneath. Well that makes it easy. Yeah, then have to decide there. Uh, and, and then, it says when a friendly combat unit is destroyed, so I'm not there yet. I can't really use Yeah, I'll help cards. you out with your cards. I'm gonna move over. Mm -hmm. Um but go ahead and resolve that, that crown effect. Okay, so uh, the tactics board that you chose. Okay, so none of that, none of those. Oh, you're, fly. you got it. Yeah, you're fine. And this guy here, go back up here. Okay. The camera is right. going on the crowd zone. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to do a panic attack, a panic test, suffering minus one to your roll. Okay, I'm going to play a card. When a friendly unit suffers a panic test, called Direwolf Fury. Perfect. I gain plus one panic to my test. Plus an additional one for each rank destroyed. So I'm going to get a total of plus two. If I control the swords, which I do, uh, one enemy engaged unit suffers d3 wounds. So this unit's going to take d3 wounds. They take a wound. You take one? You take one. Oops, sorry. So this goes away. Perfect card to draw. Card. I know, right? I'm just like, why are you giving this to me, Carl? So I'm going to get. Plus one, minus one, minus one, plus two. So I have a plus one on this die roll. I'm going to roll a ten. You're going to roll a ten, so who cares? So who cares? All right. You know, you are allowed to roll small numbers. <laughs> just, just saying. I know. Okay. So that was done? Yeah. So that was your turn. Now you get to do your turn. I get to do something else. Um, I'm going to go ahead... And I have to take Sans out. And I'm going to go ahead and. Future reference reminder when we get into a, a one unit to one unit attack, um, there's a. there's a You can shift and change face before you throw dice. And we got to go over that. But we don't have that um, opportunity right now. So my doggo is just going to maneuver closer to you. I'm just going to maneuver over here and pivot to be there now. Okay, so when he's attached to the back of your tray, does it mean he's also attacking at the same time? No, no. no. He's and, his own tray. 
So you you use the horse one. Mm-hmm. Years, so that's the fourth one. Yep. Okay. And that's it. And that's all the turns. Mm-hmm. So every unit has been activated. So now would be the time that you clean up your. Oh. Well, first first you would score points. This is round one though, so yep. we don't we don't score those objective points yet. And then you would start cleaning up. So clean up your activation markers, which I think you already did. Yep. yep. Done. And then you would remove um, influence cards and and NCUs from the tactics board. I think I'm doing these steps in the wrong order. Um, but the first thing that's most important is you'd score points first. Yep. All right. And now what we do is we draw. Um, oh, that's that's the best part of any of the round. Is you can dump cards you don't want, and then refill to your hand size. So in Mark's case, he can dump. You can dump a card, but you wouldn't get to draw one because you would still have three. Oh. So so you're benefiting right now by having four. Okay. So okay. There, there's no max hand size, guys. But it, let's say you have two cards or three cards, and you don't like one of them. You can dump one now and then refill to your hand size. Right. There's, there's no max hand size, but the minimum is three. Um, at the end of the round, you would refill to three, okay. right? Unless you have some other effects yeah. going on. So with I hand discarded size. a card, and I'm going to draw two. Oh, right. Exactly. Okay. That was fun. Yep. So even though you're rolling like a crazy man. So now you get the first turn target. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. And we're going to advance from round one to round two. Oh man, I loved it. This could be fun. And it's now your go. Yeah. You get to go first. <laughs> the the wheels are turning. Oh, I want to hit him on the backside here. Yeah. <laughs> well, Can I do that? okay. Mm-hmm. So first, um, I would like to just mm-hmm. remind to go over your cards. Huh? My cards? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so one of the key things that's not only really fun but can lead to success in this game is lining up a good move that uses cards and kind of synergizes a good combo, as you'd call it, right? So you do something cool, play a card, big smash, boom, dead, you know, that kind of thing. General thought. So if you if you look at your cards, you can see like maybe that might influence what you want to do, what, what kind of cards you have. Right, right, right. Um, you, um, you can say, oh, I got this cool card. I'm, I'm going to try to line that up this round. Okay, so uh, Carl, sage uh, advisor. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've I've got basically three two attacks that's going to happen to this guy, mm-hmm. right? And I can do another free action if I take this spot here. So one thing you might want to consider yeah. is that if I live through that, what's my first action going to be then? If you live through if three I, attacks, if I live through y'all, because you you attack one at a time, right? So you're going to do one attack, and then I'm going to try and heal. Which is it's oh, only three, it's only three wounds. Just three wounds. So it's not. Um, I actually I absolutely agree with you, Mark. I would probably s- snag that swords icon. Uh-huh. Not only because it really helps in this situation, but Matt wants that swords icon for his Stark cards. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the one of the icons that the Starks like is the yeah. swords. Okay. So basically, I can if I do that. Oh, here's the guy. All right. Uh, when he claims a zone, I can I can look the top two and place one of those cards in my hand, so I can actually get another card. And it might help him. Yeah. What happens Perfect. if he does it? You heal. So I would I would I, I would advise the extra okay. card because you can do you can do a full swing with that um, full healthy unit there. Say again. So I would advise the extra card in case it helps you out. All right. Because you can do a full swing with that healthy unit that you have. That's engaged because you have two units that are engaged, right? Yes, right. So you don't really need to heal because you can just use the other one, the other unit that's at full health. Okay. Now, um, when Aemon attack uh, claims his own, I can restore up to one wound to a friendly unit plus one wound for destroyed rank. So for this one, um, I can almost make this thing full up again. Um, you would you would give him two. You'd heal him by two. Two. Yes. Oh, and if I if I took this one, I'd be three more, so it'd be five. I can... Yeah, but that's not – then your turn's over, Yeah, right? I don't get the attack. So it's all about – what's great about this game that I love is prioritizing what you need to do, right? So what's mm-hmm. the most beneficial thing you can do right now? 
Well, okay, if I destroy this this unit, then this guy, these guys can come in, but he can still come in anyway. Yeah. Right? But getting rid of a unit that he has not activated yet is fantastic. Is it? Right, because he loses – now he loses a turn. Oh. Each, each player has a certain number of turns they get, right, based yeah. off of number of units. Okay. If you wipe that out, he doesn't get that turn anymore. So that that's this is more important than actually uh, putting these guys in the rear. Which guys in the rear? The, I'm the sorry, my camera's delayed. Yeah. Um, well, you can't do that right now because you can't charge while you're engaged, so you're stuck there. Oh, well, then that answers that question. All right, so we'll go ahead and use Bowen here. And I'll put him on. Oh, put him up in the. So you know Thank you. Um, on the attack, on the swords icon, so I can make a free attack action. I'll attack with my mm -hmm. fully staffed. Yep. Yeah. Fully staffed. <laughs> <laughs> um, first, first you would um, look at the top two cards. See if you oh, see right, if you get right, a right. see if you get a nice one. Let's see, well, two, two cards. Um. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Uh, what oh, you don't have the one I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I know which one you're looking for. I know, that's, that's not, that's that's not that's there. A good card too. That's a great card. That is a great card. Because it's not attacking with these bad boys here. I think. Yeah, nothing's going to help you do a specific attack, but that's a fantastic card. Let's keep that card. Okay, this will go on the bottom. On the bottom. Okay. And normally I wouldn't show my opponent. My card, correct. But this is a learning environment, and everything. So, come back up here, and I'll go ahead and do the attack, right? Yep. Yep. All right. So uh, that's one of these guys here. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Ooh, nice. Okay. So that's awesome. Uh, no, that's the wrong unit. That's the veterans. So you're, oh, looking that's, that's yeah. Yeah, right. you're looking for swarm brothers. Yeah, you're looking for swarm brothers. Yep. Sorry, seven. Seven dice. Mm -hmm. uh, defenders suffer minus one to their defense, and the mm -hmm. sixes get two hits. Mm -hmm. All righty then. Let's see what we can do here. Whoa! Hey! Oh, oh. Hey. this is great. Get that and all these. There is what we're looking for. Oh, I'm looking Eight. for that. Oh, Eight this, hits. This is a hit too. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they all hit. Uh, I have a four up normally. Does the tree help you at all? Not yet. Okay. So I need fives. I need four fives. <laughs> totally doable. Not even close. Uh, I save two, so this tray goes away. Kaboom! Because they died. Explosion! And you get a victory point for that. Death by combat. Thank for you. Killing me. For killing you. Is yeah. that okay. yeah. um, Also, uh, an FYI is if your opponent's enemy dies, period. The, uh, you would get a point. So there's a better way to say that. If a combat unit dies, the opponent gets a point, no matter mm -hmm. how it dies. This is right here. Alright, so now you get to, in, in any order you want, you get to pivot this unit here, and you get to take a free maneuver with this unit here. Why is that? So this is a, this is a, a game rule, not an ability, a game rule called Surge Forth. During a melee attack only, if you kill a unit, mm -hmm. the unit that committed the attack gets a free maneuver, right. and any other friendly units engaged, free pivot. They're not, well, they weren't engaged. But they, 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 they were, were engaged. They Both were. of them were. Oh. So you get to choose which one you want to do first. Mm -hmm. I would probably do the free maneuver first to give you room to pivot with the other unit. Pivot, and you can pivot over friendly and move over friendly trays. Well, as long as you don't end up overlapping. Yep, as long as the end move is done. Okay. Um, can this guy... You can pivot the face me, but you can't charge me right now. But I can move. You can move. But it, it'll just connect you, but there won't be an attack. No, you can't charge me. Okay. That's a charge. And if I do that, then I, I'm going to yeah. do my flank, so I don't want to do that. I really don't know what to do at this point. Okay, so I'll help you out. Matt could probably help you out, too. So, the thing is... So, you want to hold on to this. Yeah. Okay. That's your point maker, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this guy's full health. That guy hits really hard, so if he comes in, you don't, you don't want him to hit him. Okay. Alright, so... 
a pivot might, if you pivot first, it might end up dead here. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of maneuver so that, so that you can see him if you want to charge him. You're blocking him, and you can see the wolf if you want to charge him. Yep. Um, wow. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to prevent this guy from getting in your flank, anyways. So, like he's he's gonna get in your flank probably no matter what. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. Do you agree with all that you just did? Yep. It's fine. Okay. Then my turn's over. All right then. So I'm gonna go. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna go with my wolf first. So my wolf is gonna activate. Oh, actually, can I can I just pause here? Yeah, of course. I could after after that attack when your unit should I have played that card? Yes. So you want to heal D? So roll a D six or D three. Does, roll, it, does it apply to the one it, attack? No, it applies to a friendly in Night Watch infantry unit within short range. Fantastic. Do you see the card? So he gets to heal. One. Take the black. Oh yeah. Very good. All right. So, Three heal. So go ahead and play the Oh, card. there was an attachment on there, though, too. So let's no. do, yeah, there was. So let's do the whole thing. When an enemy combat unit is destroyed, which just happened, right. you would choose either restore wounds to a friendly unit in short range or take his attachment that was on the unit that died uh -huh. and put it on a friendly unit in short range. His attachment was the Umber Champion. I could, I could have him? You can take him. Oh. Now, it's only one. It's only, <laughs> it's only healing one wound, but you get the ability, right? I get the card? Yeah. yeah, you get the ability. Oh, I think I'd like that. Okay, you like? sure. Okay. So you want to put him? Oh. No, you can you can put him here and replace this guy, or you can put him here. I'll put him. I'll put him here. Okay, and I think the uh, I think he replaces the model. No, he oh, heals. he replaces. Yeah, because you're oh because you're attaching it to a unit, and yeah. the rules for attaching a, an attachment is replacing. Okay, so the if model. he replaces, let's take this one. There you go. Well, if you replace this one, then his abilities are already active because he only does stuff. When your guys are hurt. Oh, all right. Good to know. So it's kind of an extra deterrence from him attacking this unit, right? Okay. Maybe. I mean, you can put it wherever you want. I but... have no idea. I'm going to go on your Okay, let's go for it. Now. Okay. Wow. All right. So now this card is done. Done. It this... goes to the discard pile. Wink. Okay, it doesn't go underneath. It goes no, discard. it's discard okay. pile. Wow. So Good card. Yep. Yeah. So my maneuver. Thanks for letting me play it. Yeah. So I'm going to take a free maneuver. I'm just going to go over to the side. And now I'm going to charge this unit here. I get there. So I'm going to go ahead and align like so. Okay. Now when I attack you, you become vulnerable because I'm attacking your side. That's That's an ability. Yep. It's a flank? The yep. flank? Right. No, that's because of Grey Wind. It's because oh, of Grey Wind. Grey Wind. Right. Yep. And I get two attacks. Needing to just re rolling to hit. So I got two hits. Okay. okay. And then how can I put the other one in? You it's can't. a side flank. Huh? It's a side flank, though. It's smaller. So he came in like this, right? Yeah. So the side would align with the middle. Okay. There we go. So the Swarm Brothers are taking it. Now, because I'm attacking your flank, it's a minus one to your um, safe. Um, okay. Well, all right. So I have some great cards here. Um, when a friendly combat unit is attacked, mm -hmm. after attack dice are rolled, automatically block D3 hits. Yep. Okay, how do I do that? You declare you're doing it, so you play the card. Play the card. So, now you're just going to roll D3. This one here? Yep. So you block one. Okay. Now you have a choice, because you're a night watch, you can either discard this or attach it to the unit. You want to attach it to the unit. Okay. So this now becomes a permanent ability, but the ability says on the bottom. While you, know. while you control the money sack, mm -hmm. uh, each time this unit is attacked, automatically block D3 hits. Yep. Wow. 
Okay. Yeah, so that's a that's called the Val mechanic, specifically for the Night's Watch faction in the game. Val, okay. No. Yeah. All right, so this guy has a Val now. Yep. All right. So you still have one more save to make. You blocked one, but I hit you twice. Oh, got it. I blocked one. Yep, so now you got to roll one die. Okay. And, and it's one. minus one to your save, because I'm in your flank. Minus one to my save. Does this help at all? Three? No, not okay. not for saves. Okay, so I am looking for Wait, what, what doesn't help? The wear tree doesn't help for a save. Correct. So I'm normally a four plus, but mm -hmm. now I need to be a five plus. Yep. Got it. So you lose a guy. Okay. Wait, a four plus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and now you need to take a panic check, but because I'm attacking your flank, it's going to be a minus one. Okay, panic is a six. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be a seven on two dice. On two dice. Now that's that's just using math to know what you need, but just a reminder for folks is you apply it after you roll dice. The reason is, is you can't go below zero. And so the max wounds that you can take is your morale stat. Snap. So you're fine. All right. No panic here. Yep. Now what's his activation? What's his thing here again? Uh, vulnerable. Am I still vulnerable? Yes. He needs to spend it to remove it. Your opponent spends it. So let's say let's say you blocked like six hits. You did a good defense roll. He can spend it and make you re-roll all those good blocks. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm vulnerable now. <clears throat> okay. So that was your. That was my activation. And actually. This is for you. No, no, this stays on your side. This is not, it's your go. You went for first. this entire oh, round. First, but yeah. I didn't activate. Did no, I? you did. You activated him. Oh, you're right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So now. Thought process. Don't feel free to share. Um. Well, I'm just reading the other ones here. Okay. So. There's a couple things. One is the money bag will get rid of that vulnerable token. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll help you with the shield that guards the realms of men. So that's a great zone for you right now. Uh, but I, I, would I do it on this one? That's true. Because I only, I only have one wound on this. Um, so if you want to get rid of vulnerable, you can use the money sack on the, on on the one wound guy. And then you could use Amon's ability on the other guy. We only heals two on that side. Yeah, yeah, that's fine though. Okay, explain that again. Please. Okay, so Amon's ability and the and the tactic boards are two different effects you get. Right. They don't have to go together. Right. So when you claim the zone with Amon, mm -hmm. he heals, and the zone itself also heals. But this is the one that removes the condition token. Right. right. That's what's really going to hurt you. The condition token. Yes, because when these angry men come slamming into you. Right. He's going to use this to make you reroll your saves, and this is just going to wipe you guys, right? Okay. Um, so that sucks, in my opinion. Um, now, yeah, you could heal this guy full strength if you wanted to, but that's that would still be there. So this is a very bad thing. Mm -hmm. the, anytime you get a condition token, they are all very bad. In this case, in this specific case, it's really bad because these guys are staring you down, right. and these berserkers hit hard. Okay. Just pointing those things out. Um, yeah, that's about it. But you 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 don't you don't have to use this guy first. But that's a really good move. Remember, you get a bonus for that also. Mm -hmm. So you control this each time this unit is attacked. Oh well, that is so it's double good. That's yeah. really good. All right, I'm gonna do that. Okay, so you put him up here. Put him up there. Money back. So we're gonna heal this and take away the vulnerable from the from the square. So heal him. Yeah. And then that goes away. Yeah. And then this one's going to heal two from Aemon. And because of Aemon. Yep. Because of one rank, rank is gone. Yep. And then just do that. So two more in here. Yep. Good. And the nice watch <laughs> continues. No. No. All right. <laughs> and that was my turn. Yeah, it was your turn. So I'm going to go ahead and take this fine young lady to here. Which is a horse? Yep. What do you got? Actually, you got devastating impact. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do her first. We just want to make certain that can I fit there? Yes, I can. But we're just gonna go. We're gonna go. 
So I can fit there. He's, he's actually. What you're doing? Like that. No, 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 not because he had to be actually because he's, cause he's oh, on because he's he? on the flank. It's a shorter, shorter track. Oh, I see. Shorter edge. That wasn't an arrow. Then. They're not squares. Yeah. What you thinking, bud? Yeah, for the, for the people at home, what are you? Doing? So I'm thinking I want the dog to stay away from me. So I'm trying to get away from. Oh. The dog. So we're just gonna go to right there. <laughs> Good luck with that. Fear the dog. Fear the dog. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Jon Snow's just gonna rack up points over there. <laughs> That's fine. We're just gonna go. You know, I just wanna see what So that goes like that. We're just gonna go right. Okay. Um, your go. Okay. Well, I've got both of my guys working, so yep. it's gonna have to be a real unit. Um, oh, let's see if that. Okay, so this thing here, uh, while you control this, each time this unit is attacked, mm -hmm. so it doesn't mean that he's attacking. Mm -hmm. And you got a free one, so he's not activated yet. Correct. All right. All right. Okay, tell me how I can attack. You can just attack them. Okay. Oh, the berserkers. Yeah. Can I get through this pile here? How do I get this? This so unit. Can, yes. So you can charge if you want. Um, so this guy can charge him. Right. You can't move through enemies though. This guy's stuck here. He's engaged. Right. Okay. So you can't really get to get this guy no, except for the ghost. Okay. okay. So you can you can pivot and move through friendlies. So you can just announce that you're charging, and we'll okay. help you out okay. if that's what you want to do. Do it. Uh, all right, so that's what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well done. So the first thing you do is declare that you're activating this unit. Activating the unit. Okay. There you go. And then the first thing you do is pivot, which you don't need to, because if you move straight, you're gonna hit him. Mm -hmm. So okay. you're fine. All right. And, and then you'll roll. Actually, when I hit him, then I can really exactly. You're right. gonna align so that align you're not overlapping. Yeah. All right. And this is to see if I have a misguided. Yep. You're okay. fine. Okay. So it, it would do in like, um, uh, and like showing the camera, it would move forward, hit Greywind, and then during alignment, it would align at fifty percent right there. Okay. Can I do full? Nope. Why not? Because then you'd be overlapping your unit. But it would just be right to the edge. No, no, no. That's not full. It's the arrow to the center would be full, right? And that would be overlapping your guys. Oh, arrow to the center. Got it. Yeah. So, got it, got it, got so it. now it's edge to the center. Got yep. it. Right there. That makes sense. Okay. That's where you want to be anyways. All right. So you get how many dice? All right. So that's those guys. Um, I have all three ranks. So I have seven. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, um, this guy here. Mm -hmm. Is that two? Nope, because you're at full health now, so that doesn't okay, do so anything. Okay, so it doesn't do anything. Nope. Okay, but he's working for me now. He's on the payroll. He's on the payroll, the Night's Watch, which okay. is soup and bread. Uh, okay, so you need a three plus. Well, you may re-roll because you have a successful, not disordered charge. Ooh. Roll. Okay. There you go, dude. Eight hits. Set. Oh, eight hits, right. Mm -hmm. So two, four, six, eight. I need fives because I'm normally at three, but you're attacking my flank, so it's minus one. Okay. And you're sundering, which is another minus one. Uh, oh, sundering defenders. Mm -hmm. oh, minus one. Okay. Wow. I almost made it. <laughs> <laughs> I made six out of eight. So he the doggy dies. You made six, five ups. Yes. Uh, they, yeah, look at all those numbers. Gee, man. I mean, so the dog you, dies. You do not want to play risk with this guy. Um, the, the dog does not grant you a VP, but now he's out of the way. Yeah, that's, no. yeah. So the unit that made the attack gets a mark. <laughs> uh, you say I don't get a VP for that. You don't get a VP, but the, the unit that you just did, that you yeah. just activated, that made the attack, right. killed the enemy unit, so they get a free what? Oh. Test. 
It's called Surge Forth. Oh, right. Uh, and these guys, they're in short range. What is that Surge Forth information? Cheat sheet card. Surge Forth. If the attacker destroys an enemy with a melee attack, they may make one free maneuver. All other friendly units engaged with that enemy may make a free pivot. These guys can make a free pivot. Yeah. And this guy can make a maneuver. A but maneuver. you want to hold the objective. Got it. Okay. So maneuver the pivot, speed and pivot. Alright. Wow. Goodness. I really want to attack these guys, but I don't want to show my plan for them. So how about if I just move these guys? Well, these guys really don't do anything, right? What do you no. mean? Oh, these, these, they're this holding guy? their objective. Oh, that's okay. their, that's your mission for them, right? Is to hold the yeah, objective. they're just sitting there. Um, and I don't see so, what I, so this I guy, do this guy did the killing, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So maybe even, maybe even just back up, because you don't want to get hit, right? I'll just back up as far as I can, mm -hmm. away from any threats. All right. Or if you wanted to, you could go forward and like protect that guy's flank. But it's not really in danger, so. Yeah. Um, you're a pretty good spot. I mean, you can see this guy right now, so you can charge him if you want. There's not really, there's not really much um, moving around. This no, this yeah. is pretty tight. All right. Well, in this specific situation, it's pretty, you're looking pretty good already. All right. You might go? Your go, sir. I guess so. Matt can go. So the horseshoes are going to go. Horseshoes are going to... Get a free maneuver and turn all the way around so I can see your flank. They're staring at ghosts. They're like, let's go the other way. <laughs> so we're just going to charge the flank here. I get there. So. Oh, um, what did I do? I'm going to end up. Do you need us to pause? No. Uh, we're good. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to get eight dice. I'm going to be hitting on fours. We'll be rolling to hit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, we rolling to hit. Oh. Wow. So, seven hits. Because the sixes are double? Why didn't you no. play uh, Impact? Saving it. Oh, sorry. Okay, you got seven hits. You got seven hits. Okay, and then, does this thing work? Yep. When, while you control the money, which I do, mm -hmm. um, automatically block D3 hits. Mm -hmm. oh, so I have to roll a D3 first? You have to roll a D3. You got it. Okay. So you block two. All right. So you have five hits in your flank. My kids in my flank. Now, let's talk about the. I, I do a minus one because it's an attack in the flank. Yep. Is it a plus one because of the tree? No, 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 no. The tree only affects morale. Ah, okay. Only affects morale. So minus one because of an attack in the flank. Yep. Uh, defense is normally at a four. Mm -hmm. I have to get fives on this. Yep. And how many do I have? Well, I don't know a five, right? Yep. Because that's many hits. Right. And Dude, nice roll. That was the best roll ever. <laughs> okay, so he loses a guy. So that's your third wound. Oh, this guy. Sorry. Right. Yep. And now I'm in your flank, so now you have to take a panic test at plus one, minus one, minus one for the flank. Indeed. So now you need to roll two dice. And you want to roll high. Two dice. Normally it would be a six, six. plus, but because of what you just said. You want to roll seven to pass. Seven to pass. But remember, the dice roll is on, uh, the the modifiers on the dice roll, not the number. So, so you're gonna roll the two dice and then subtract one. Mm -hmm. so okay. Four minus one. So you roll a three. And how many? How many did you miss that by? Three. So that's three more wounds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how the panic test work, guys. That is uh, you're gonna roll two dice, try to reach your morale stat. You're gonna adjust, you're gonna apply modifiers to your roll, and for every every 
point that you missed your target by is a wound. Which in this case was three. That's you? No. Nope. That was our activation. He's done. Okay. Your activation. Okay, so this is pretty much all we're playing. Mm -hmm. Um let's see. So I, I'm going to point out two things for Mark, yeah. if he wants. Um, this would be, well, I kind of like how you guys are facing the Berserkers right now, but this would be an example of if you choose to attack with this unit, yeah. you can change face and shift. So you could end up over here. So I'm going to do it so you can see it. So let's say you attack with this unit. You can change face and then shift to how you want to align, which would be like this. Uh -huh. Okay. If, you, if you them, wanted to, just yeah, get away from them. just get away from them. But in this stance, you're at least facing them front, front on. Right? Mm -hmm. um, another cool thing that I just saw is that wonderful Jon Snow unit is mm -hmm. doing absolutely nothing. Right. So you could double activate Jon Snow and Ghost, and kind of swap positions. You could yes. get Jon yeah. Snow out and then put Ghost on the mark. That's, that's a love that idea. Yeah. Do it. Um, but better than than having ghosts attack them and their. Well, I don't know if it's so better. So ghost ghost will use some wounds. The problem is the uh, the the dire wolves only have two wounds. So if anything looks at them funny, they die. Huh. Okay. Well, this is the fact that like if like they touch me, it's like cool. Here's eight wounds. By the numbers, you die. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And yeah, it's so like yeah. oh, so like don't the the dire wolves are like an extra thing. They're not an independent unit. They're independent, but it's like they need to be support. They're support units. Right. So, yeah. like you saw over here, like you attacked and just annihilated my dog, my direwolf. Yes. The same thing applies to your direwolf. Yeah, right? I, I like having him hold so, on to stuff. Yeah. So if you want to do that, you're probably your best bet would be to march. Move these guys first. Yeah, you want to march these guys forward. Oh, um, more coffee. And then, and then pivot. Right? Yep. So you probably want to march them. It's going to take a while because of the barrier. Yeah. I, is there, can I just, uh, I like the maneuver because I can pivot. Well, the problem with the here, pivot. And then I want to be here. The problem is if you pivot, you're going to go over the corpse pile and that minus wow. one in your movement. Mm. So you could pivot and then you would go... From before to here, you'd only end up here, but then you need to go around the barrier again. Right, right, right. So, but if you just commit to come out to here, yeah. you're around the barrier, barrier. Then next round, you march to here, right. and then the next round you can act. Okay, so gonna be march because it's gonna it's gonna take. You're not gonna go the full distance. You're gonna go so, forward because you're not you're not in the barrier. So you're just gonna go to right here and then pivot. Like so, right. to set you up for the next round to just march past the barrier. Love it. Also, <laughs> that doesn't come with you. <laughs> that stays behind. That was in the middle. Right? Yeah, it was right. It was right about there. Okay. okay. So that's their activation. Now the dog, the the dire wolf, is going to take a free maneuver first. Pivot. Pivot. And then move. And then do a free maneuver this way. Right. Move speed is six. Mm-hmm. Well, we put six on this end. Yep. And then you can either do a free maneuver or march onto the objective. I would just march up. Yep. So, you know, you're going to go like yeah. that to here, and then you'll pivot. Yeah, I want to, I want to face this way. I want to pivot like that. And that way, if the horses come in magically, you don't have to worry about it in the future. Fair enough. So, because these guys are the sweat anyway, so let's go like that. Okay. All right, and then you put down your flags. Your, yeah. Because they both activated. They both activated. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to go again. I'm going to take Pretty Woman, and she is going to go here. So, she's going to attach to the Berserkers. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm going to make this unit a vulnerable again. And I'm going to draw two cards. Boom. Done. And that's my turn. Mm. Okay. Back over to Mark. 
So, Kate, Caitlyn's on the Berserker's best combo ever. Not really, but it's really good. Mm-hmm. Caitlyn now lets the Berserker swing with 10 dice. Because they actually gain dice as they die. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. You're vulnerable again, that sucks. Um, but you have this active, you're going to block some hits. But it looks like because they're speed of 6, they're going to pretty much get in. What if I back up? Do that but if you do that attack, then they could actually come up short. Do you agree, Matt? I do agree. I don't know if it's the best move, though. I don't know either. What would you um, You can attack and just stay there. You can just go, I'm going to attack this guy and just stay there. Those guys are done. That guy's done. This guy's done. These mm-hmm. guys are done. So it's this guy no matter what. Right. Right? That's the, that's the only one left. Right? Yep. Um, how, do I, how do I move this guy again? So if you if you were to declare an attack, there's two, two things you could do, really. is attack or retreat. Okay, if you were to declare an attack, you can just swing as is. Right. Okay? Or you could choose to change face, which would be face the guy you're attacking. And you can only do this if you're only engaged by one enemy. If you're, if you're double engaged, you can't do this. Uh-huh. And then you can choose how you align, which is 50, right. 100, or 50. But then, yeah, my flank's exposed. That's no Your flank's exposed, but you're just farther away now. Now remember, this is minus one to his distance, and he rolls two dice to charge. So ruler would be currently at about let's say uh, minus one. So he needs he needs a twelve. He needs to roll a six with two dice to get a successful charge. Six with two dice. Yeah. So mean? that's. I mean, yeah. So this makes you roll an extra dice and choose the lowest when you charge. So it's really hard for him to charge you in this case. Can like you this. give me the dynamics of that charge again? Sure. So if you did this, right. and he would want to charge, right. um, he would scope it out, see if he could possibly get there, which he can. He needs an 11. He would then pivot, and then because of this, he would roll two dice instead of one and pick the lowest. Uh-huh. right? And it looks like the di- the number he needs is a six. So he'd have to roll box cars to get here. That's what I'm saying. That's what I thought yeah. you were going to try to say. Okay, yeah. good. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. So, so that, that, that unit's activated. That basically was an attack. You haven't attacked it. Now you're attacking. So the first, like, before you roll the dice, right, is what you just did there. It's the change phase and shifting. Shift, change facing. Good. And then now, and then you, now I, you do the now resolution. Mm-hmm. Okay. This That's, that means that they've gone. They've just gone. Yeah, I'm just laying it like that so the camera can see it. Oh, all right. But they haven't attacked yet. But they have been activated. Yes. So. All right. So now the attack for those guys there is a three plus seven. No, I'm down to five. Right? Okay. Uh, let's see if this card does anything for me. Not for an attack, it's for defense. It's, yeah, this is when I'm attacked. Okay, so it doesn't do anything for me. And um, this this guy is on that unit, right? So. Yes. Now these guys are still here. Right? Yeah, they're still vulnerable. You can vulnerable. put it in the tray. Yep, there you go. Right. Um, okay, that's it. Go for it. So you're gonna wait for that at the right time. When he tries to when he tries to do the vulnerable thing, that's when you throw that down. So but, just, but he's already expended the token. No, no, no. He hasn't oh. expended it yet. You oh. d- you have a token. Ah, oh, I see. All right, so just do the attack. Yep. Yep. Okay, so back to this uh, five uh, three plus. Yep. Sixes cause two hits. Defenders so just roll five sixes well. and we're good. All right. All right. So, Not bad. <laughs> two sixes and three other hits. So five, six, seven. Yep. You're, seven. you're spreading the good uh, dice rolling disease around. Yeah. So I only save one, so I lose horses. I lose so, two full horses. Okay. Okay. And those stay there because you, you took six, right? I took six. Okay. Okay. Cool. So oh, wow, I'm going really well. to play a card. That when a friendly unit suffers a panic test, they get plus one to the panic test, plus an additional one for every rank to strike. So plus two. So I rolled a five, plus two is six, seven. So I pass. No extra ones. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a free retreat because I'm Stark Outrider. That's what the Outriders do. I roll four. Oh, you're getting up, folks. This is, this is serious. Alright, <laughs> so we're going to go 9 inches. 
so this game, if, if anyone's coming in, hey Chase, how you doing? Uh, if anyone's jumping in, this is like a small demo 27 point um, game where we're just okay. using three objectives with no cards. And to get the basics and go through all the different ways, different right? actions and everything like that. Uh, Mark's doing fantastic at picking it up. On your left, you have Mark, and he is brand new to the game. Hello. So if you rewind and go back to when we started, he has lots of good questions, and, and we have lots of explanations. Matt on the right here is our local tournament champion, and um, an, an awesome awesome help to the community. Lots of demos with, from Matt. So. And then you get to pivot now after I retreat. I get the pivot. You get the pivot. Let's, let's face you then. So that way you can face me. Yep. Now you're facing me. And I need to do something like this. Yep. So that you can't hit me up. Yep. Okay. All right. So that was your turn. Now it's my turn. Hmm. Okay. Do you, have sort of Do you have sort of dance? I have devastating impact. So it might be time for Sansa. Yeah, we're gonna use Sansa. I think. grab that switch of dance. Yeah. What's happening to me? <laughs> uh, we're about to do the Stark BS. The role, Stark so. BS. So we're gonna go like this. They fly around the board pretty good. So I get to search for a card once per game. I get to search for a card. That sounds the Stark's ability. Right here, he's using it's a once per round ability. I'll let you read it. Once per round? Once per game. I mean, once per game, I'm sorry. Once per game, once per game, once per game, once per match versus mark round. So, I don't actually need to, though, is the thing. So, I'm just going to do Devastating Impact and get to you, anyways. Oh, it's auto six, huh? It's an auto six. So, ah. I don't need to, but I still want to look for a card. Um. Just when I thought it when you get out. there, how about some Northern Ferocity? No, that's Sundering. You don't need that. I do, well, I would like a... Uh, oh, um, Hit and Run. Rob has Hit and Run. Uh, tactical Regrouping. Uh, no, okay. Hit and Run. Where's Hit and Run? Yeah, After a friendly... Yeah, let's do that. Um, Whose side are you on over there? Let's let's show the viewers some the, fun stuff. The new guy. So Sansa, Sansa let Matt dig for a card. And I personally like to use Sansa. She can go in the discard pile too. That way, if you're using lots of cards like I do, you don't you don't run out as easy. You don't use cards. I use cards as soon as I can. <laughs> so, um, which is probably not always the best thing. But okay, so we're gonna go ahead and activate this unit. We're gonna declare a charge from here to here. And when I do, pivot. I'm gonna do devastating impact. Um, I since I control the horse, I automatically count as rolling sixes. So what's the read the top to bottom of the card? The unit may reroll their charge distance die, and their attack deals two automatic hits. Um, if I control the movement, which I do with Sansa, the unit automatically counts as having rolled six for their charge distance, and they deal plus two additional wounds instead. Wow. So. Yep. Bring it on. It sounds pretty devastating. I'm going to get to you. Yeah. Uh, even with the, the minus. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we're going to go... We're going to go... It doesn't really matter because I'm going to play the other card when I'm done to get to where I'm going to be. So we're just going to go right there. Okay. Now then. I'm going to get, because I have her, I'm going to get 10 dice. Five, one, two, three, four, five. I get 10 dice, and, wow. and I'm going to need threes re-rolling to hit. You just need a three or higher? I need a three or higher. Okay, so you got 10 hits coming. Maybe. <laughs> oh, and then you suffer two automatic wounds. Right. right now? Right now. What you guys have? Boink. Okay, so nine hits all together. <laughs> and they're sundering, so it's minus one to your save. Sounds like berserkers to me. Mm -hmm. Wish you had another shield, but you don't. 
So this none of this matters. So I need four, yeah, four nice. plus. Five plus. But five plus because of the because of sundering. Sundering. Yep. And how many? Like, Nine. Jeez. This is why. Is there anything this else? is why cards are so good. Is this helping you? Um, that's when you attack. See the little attack symbol. So you know this card that has been helping you out a lot. There's another one in there. So the Tatsis cards are really great, but these aren't really helping you right now. But they might be because when it this one, yeah, when they destroy, <laughs> yeah, both yeah. of them, yeah, exactly. Right, right. Okay. There you go. There's a few saves. Well, Three. is it fours or fives? Fives. fives. Wow. So all these are dead. Yes, yeah, so six die. I'll go ahead and help you out. You got the stand up over each here. Blink, and you got down to one man. Now you have to take a panic test at plus one. At plus one. Mm -hmm. um, any of these work for me? You have. Um, so a combat unit is the whole tray, so not yet. So that the, neither one of these works? Nope. Mm -hmm. And not that, that one. That doesn't work. Nope. So this is a weird situation that we rarely see, which is Night's nice Watch not having cards to play. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Okay. So. So. Um, is it a panic attack for the, the, the Swan Brothers or for him? Because he's the only one that. He attacked Swarm. you. Panic attack for you. So the guy is just an attachment. It's still a Swan Brother unit. Okay. Got so. It. So I need a 6 plus, plus 7 plus. Oh, I see your five question. Plus. I see. 5 plus. Five yeah. plus. So you're fine. Oh, nice. So this unit's cards would look like this. He's attached to this. Yeah. Right? So it's not separate. Okay. Right. I just put it separate because you have two of these guys. All right. I'm actually going to stay in. So, but I'm going to keep the hit run, but stay in. So, that's my activation. Oh, stay in what? Well, I could, I could run away, but... He right. grabbed a card that oh. he, could, he, he could get a free retreat right now if he wanted to. Can I have this guy run over here? This no. Group? Nope. So, but that's uh, that's the end of it. That's the end of the round? That's the end of the round. Everything's okay. activated. So, now we'll score. Now we'll score. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mark's going to score one for holding this by one guy. <laughs> and one for over And there. one for over there. So, two points for Mark. Why? So you're on top of that token. Yes. You claimed it, right? Yes. So this is the end of the round we're scoring. So oh. you, it's round two. Okay. So we start scoring these. You get one for that, one for that. Yes. And he gets one for this one. Got it. I'm going to give you a three. You want to hand me back your one. Okay. There you go. And then uh, clean up. Yep. Take all your activation stuff back. Boom. Send your politicians to bed. Boom. They're so tired from all that talking. And you get this? Yep, and then discard cards if you'd like. I'm actually going to go to round three. I've got four. Oh, and three. Matt's now the first player. I'm actually going to keep all my cards. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and go with you. If that's okay. Folks say, welcome aboard, Mark. Oh. To the game. Thank you. <laughs> Is it all right if I goes? He goes. All right, I'm going to take the free attack. So you're using this one. Did you guys do cards yet? Um, I decided not to discard any cards. So, Mark, I'm, I'm thinking that these two are going to come into play right now, right? Um, so since these have the same exact timing, you yeah. actually only get to play one at a time. We haven't talked about that yet because it hasn't come up. But this is the game terminology is for this timing of when to play is called a trigger. So each like timing in the game that has a trigger, you can only do one. Card or order. Okay, so when per trigger, when, when my unit is destroyed, I only get to play one card, not both. Yes. Got it. Exactly. Which one of these would um, be mine? So, so this one is fantastic because you don't die. Okay. This one you get cool stuff, but, um, you, die. but you die. Yeah. Um, now technically, so, technically, if I play the one that says I don't die but don't pass the morale test. Do I get to play the other one then? Or no. No. Okay. No. One card per trigger. All right. Do I, am I, do I still have that vulnerability token? Yeah, you still have a vulnerability. Um, that stays but since, since he didn't go after you last round, you do have a way to remove it. And I don't know if it's as important right now than saving this guy. Um, so it's really your choice. I I really love this card. This is fantastic. Okay. I don't. I'm not. This is. This is. This can be really good, but it's kind of like this. Uh -huh. All the nice watch cards are so good. It's hard for me to give advice, really. So um, just try to try to think what's going to happen this round, and you can voluntarily toss to pick up more if you want. 
I, I kind of at this point we're round three. I kind of don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to take over your choices. Oh, okay, that's stupid. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna attack you. That's a lot of sixes, dude. Doesn't matter for this okay. unit. So seven hits on this unit here. Minus one to the save. Minus one to the save because of I'm sundering. Sundering. Two, three, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, he's part of the Swarm Brothers. Mm -hmm. Four plus nine, eight, five plus. Mm -hmm. If I don't get them all, he's dead. Yeah. Correct. So you failed one. Yeah. Barely. <laughs> you failed yeah, a barely. That was a good roll. You failed three. Out of three out of seven. Not bad. All right. So, so now this is this this is the timing where it says your unit is being destroyed, right? So if you want to trigger a card that yes. you have that says you trigger a card, but this was a free one, so he can attack again. This is true. Can use the other card. This is true. True. Well, no. Yeah. No, yeah. because he's not he's attacked, but he's not destroyed. These are destroyed people. Yeah. So I would use John Snow's card. This one here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. If Go I ahead and be read destroyed, it. Mm -hmm. that unit may make a morale test. On a success, they are not destroyed, but remain in play with one remaining wound. Yep. Oh, if within short range of John Snow's unit, also remove any activation. So I'm going to remove this activation yeah, token. That's, first off, that's a condition token, it's not an activation token. Second off, John's over here. <laughs> oh, well, let's be very clear about this. Oh, okay. John is over here doing his own thing right now. All right. Hmm. You may return one attached bell card from that unit to your hand. There's no bell card. You want to play Jon Snow. So really? Yeah. Not this one. Not that one. Okay. Be I'll, I'll trust you. Okay. All right. So I have to make a morale test. Yep. And you get plus one because of the tree. And I have to make it a six. Mm -hmm. So I just need a five. To yep. Two dice. So you make it. Okay. So that just stays there. He's alive. So the card goes away. <laughs> Goes away. Now you have to take a panic check because you did suffer wounds. So he could still die? He could still die. Ooh. But. Alright. Uh, panic. Panic is. Panic? Yep. Same thing. Same thing. Just Same thing. Just, just the. So you just have to roll the dice again. Okay. And still looking roll. for a 5 plus. Yeah. Okay. You made it. Alright. All right. So everything's fine. Everything's good. Alright. He's uh, alive. He's alive. And then I'm going to go ahead my turn, my turn, my turn. and play Hit and Run. I automatically count as rolling a six. And these guys are going to run away. Oh, yeah. oh get thee hence. Take off, dudes. And you, go. you may pivot, Mark, that unit. I can pivot this unit? Because mm -hmm. oh. you ran away. Okay, whose turn is it next? Uh, yes. Yours. All right. All right. Oh, dang. Okay. I want to attack this. Go for it. So you have to declare a charge. Declare a charge. That's oh, no, funny. What? Never mind. I have a card. You, you guys go ahead. I'm done. So when you declare a charge. <laughs> I'm declaring a charge, yes. I'm going to play a card. When an enemy unit charges, that enemy must roll an additional charge dice and take the lowest. Bummer. Okay, so <laughs> take so the first thing you're going to do is activate this unit, right? You're activating them. Okay. Okay. Then you declared a charge. You played that card. And now you got to roll two dice. And take the lowest. Take first, the lowest. first thing you do is actually pivit. So <laughs> try to close the gap. One, it's a failed charge. Is that the idea? No. Well, it's a disorder charge. So. So it could be fair. So, so you're good. Yeah. Definitely good. No oh, shoot. Yep. You're good. Me. So you would go straight, do, 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 make contact, okay. and then align how you like. I want to align away from those dudes. Okay. Is that right? Yep. If you want okay. to. All right. All right. What's next? Uh, you attack. You have two ranks. Two ranks. Two ranks. Still right here for me? Nope. This is one I'm attacked. Okay. Nope, nope. Okay. Just a straight attack. Mm hmm. Um, Alright, so let's see here. Five dice. Mm hmm. Five dice. 
Jon Snow's gonna come clean up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, what's going on over there, guys? Uh... So we rolled a hit. Oh. Um... He's good. Okay. So I need to roll five dice. I need threes. So that's a hit. And that's a hit. Yeah. And that's a roll AC. Yeah, because you made a successful charge. Nice. Okay. And technicality for new players is you can re-roll any dice you want. So if like you want if, if it's a last ditch effort and you need critical blows, you can re-roll hits to get sixes if oh, you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> so five hits all together. Five hits gives us six. Yep. So it's sundering, so it's minus one to my save. So I need lots of ones. <laughs> I need five. <fires. laughs> Uh, Ooh. I make one. That's going to be the unit right there. Kaboom! It goes away. <laughs> nice. So Power to a, the people. That's an immediate victory point. Yep. So you Mark. Get a, you get a victory point. I got it. Thank you. And then uh, search forth for Mark. And what? Search yeah. forth. Remember what that is? Search forth. Uh, it's on the card. Mm -hmm. Okay. And make one free maneuver action. Victory point. Thank you. And the maneuver is pivot, speed, pivot. Yeah. So I don't think you can claim the objective. I was wondering if I could do that. Because yeah. the problem is it's going to be minus. It's going to be minus one. So you're going to be just shy. Actually, <laughs> let me see something here. Because oh, what's, what's cool about this? He's smiling. The pivot, right? There's so no way he's pivoting closer. But if you get as close as you can, and then you pivot, your corner can touch the. It's, he's not even that close. He's literally an inch away from it after he gets there. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. I'll tell you right now. Let's, let's, use, let's use an arc. I just want to find out. All right. So you're going to pivot okay. to try and get as close as possible because we were talking about you need to face it directly. Okay. Oh, okay. We'll just save his spot then. Yeah. Okay. And then you're going to move four inches forward. Right about there. It's mm -hmm. five. Minus one because he's not of, touching the course pile. That's what I'm trying right. to say. So he, he goes as much as he can before he touches the course pile. All right. So he can go like four and three quarters. Okay. Right. And then when he pivots, he'll be on. Oops, he moved, I moved it. it. Oh, he's gonna come be on. just out, dude. Come I told on. you that. But I told you from the beginning. That's what I was trying to do, though. I yeah. know what you're trying to do, but I'm telling you, he's he doesn't have the move. Okay. So. It's still the right move is to get closer. Yeah, and then turn them a little bit toward those guys. Yeah. There's it's a... still the right move because of what's going to happen yeah, next. Yeah, exactly. Like so. Yeah, but how you um, can't be sure by eyeballing it. Come on now. I knew by eyeballing it. I'm a... I, I, it would take me a long time. You were... I was 100% You were confident. Correct. I was 100% confident. I would have bet money on it. All right, all right. That was my money. Yep. All right, my go, I'm going to go ahead and charge you here. Okay. One. I get you. So I get, that would have been great with a one time. Right. Right point. Time so, dice. Okay, how about if I just die right now? <laughs> that would be great. I mean, I, I'm, you, you don't have to do it. I'm, I admit death. <laughs> <laughs> so ten saves. Do you see the sixes, camera people? Look at all those sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six. After real six. Really? Six sixes after real. <laughs> right, so, uh, he's dead. He's right. dead. All right. Rest so he's peace. gonna die. All right. Wait, wait, wait. He has to block. And that's what I said. But he's, he's dead. like, no, I don't want to roll. Like yeah, you gotta roll, man, because it's a it's a timing of uh, the game, right? So there could be cards or effects or you you, you gotta still play it out, even though it could be terrible and you're gonna die. I'm dead. Okay. So yeah. how many hits is that? Ten. One, two, three. Ten rolls. Mm -hmm. Ten rolls. Just, just five. Just because. All fives. No, <laughs> yeah. nine okay. rolls. So okay, gonna... so now is when you suffered enough wounds to die. Oh, yeah. So that's still the way. <laughs> okay. Now, I use this card. When a friendly unit, combat unit is destroyed, you may return one attached Val card from that unit to your hand. Zero. Zero. But then remove one activation token from a friendly unit. Whoop. Okay. What? Oh, an activation token. Yeah, they get to go again. Is that cool? Yep. Or remove 
one friendly NCU from the community school. Yeah. Oh, you, you don't even have any NCUs oh, up oh, there yet. Oh, goodness, I could have done this. Yeah. Boom. Alright, your go. It's all coming together. Ooh. This is now your go. That means he can get on this. Thing. Yes, he can. Or he can charge me. Um, yeah. How long is this chick going to be in there? She's going to be there for the rest of the round, but the unit's activated now. I have no other way to attack at this point. But if I attack you, she's still working for him. So I don't want to do that while the cards are Well, it's not going to do anything. So okay. Kate, Caitlin helps with his attacks. Oh, he's he's saying he can't attack anymore. Okay. So what you can do is... Because he's the, not a great job number. All right, then. Yeah. So it's your go. What you can do... You can do a couple different things. Do you just want to move up and take it? Yes. Okay. And I'll, I'll use this card, right? So What's it say? Oh, you use that card. To, to yeah. start the game. Okay. So now you just... I'm going to reactivate. Yeah. Well, right? Um... Unless you want to, well, they've been activated. Yeah. So is that your last unit left? Yeah, I only have that Sansa left. I mean, on the board. Yeah. You only have Berserkers. Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. So you can't really do nothing about it. Huh. I was gonna say like you need to clean the money bags, but not really. No, he's fine. Um, I would claim this before he gets. You know, what? I agree with you. I agree with you. Let's let's heal. Actually, that doesn't matter yeah. either because you're I down do? to one card. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think you need to heal because you have Amon to heal. You're going to heal two anyways. Your goal here is to get victory points. Right. So the proper thing to do would be to move this here and claim it. And then you have free reign with both of your NCUs. Unless you want to charge me. No. You, can ch you don't want to charge me. I would highly suggest taking the horse to get Jon Snow closer. That's true. That's, a, that's probably the most important thing. Only one NCU can be used now? Yes. Well, no, you can use both, but you... You only one per spot. You're picking a unit to no, go. You said right? that I have free range with those two. You can't use her anymore? No, I can, but oh. it's your activation. You're activating this first, right? So what you want to do is if you're not going to charge well, me. We were discussing what he was activating, but yeah. But he declared that, so he put that down. So I'm like, oh. what I'm saying is you could do something else, though. Right. Instead of doing that, I should take one of these first before you take it, right? Yes. Exactly. So what I would do is yeah. I would take either Amon or Bow and March mm -hmm. onto the maneuver before I get it and just move this unit up five to get them in the combat. Closer, yeah. One friendly unit can make a free maneuver or retreat. Okay. Because um, John's just hanging out. And you've out got a full there. thing, so you wouldn't be taking the, the I won't take it unless I want to block you. Unless you want to take it from me. Which right? I might do. Yeah, why not? Um, now, if you, if you take this and you make a free maneuver, you get close to me, but you can't attack. Correct. Oh, I don't, I don't worry about that. But it's all about blocking you at this point. I want yeah, to block so you. This, from... this helps you immensely to get John closer. Yeah. Right? So he's going to prevent you from doing that. It doesn't matter if it helps him or not. It's just that it's really good for you. Yes. All right. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, so you're going to take one of your characters and put them over there. All right. So I'll get a card by using the one. Yep. So you're gonna put them on the maneuver. All right, you're just gonna move five forward from the one to the six. Okay. Good, done. And then you get to do cards. Okay. Two cards, and I get to choose one and put the other one on the board. Mm -hmm. What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? Ooh, that's what you've been missing all game is extra punch. I like. I like this one. Yeah, this is great. This one's extra punch. This is extra movement. Movement. So, oh, I like that one. I think this one's better yeah. in this situation because I you make me vulnerable, but I don't really care because I'm five up and I want you I want to lose ranks. Yeah. That one, if I attack him, he gets to move this unit closer before it activates for free. Right. So I like, boom. I like right. it. Um my go is I'm gonna go ahead and go here. You wanna go here? No, I wanna make sure you don't heal no matter what. Actually, the best move would be to zap you. Is that right? Zap attack. Um, zap attack. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and just draw cards. We're just gonna do that. That's the best move. So we're gonna draw. I'm gonna draw two cards. And tell me the condition and where I'll put it. I want him to take a panic. You got it right here. Yeah. I want him to take a panic test. 
I mean, sorry, not a panic test, but a panic token on this guy. That is how you throw a token right there. Mm -hmm. Bam. Okay, you did, you did the third one. Yep. Okay. All right, so you now have all, I am activated out. It's now your go. All right, and then this one here. Mm -hmm. Heal up the full. Okay, you store up to one, uh, two, three, four, five. So all four. Yep. Right? And I remove a one token. Yep. Which one would you remove? I would remove... The panic or the vulnerability? Either. Well, so if saying I don't know what's in your hand, let's say I don't know what's in your hand, you don't have that card. Okay. If you didn't have that card, I would probably remove the panic token. Um, Because the vulnerable... To well, no. I'd remove... Mm, <laughs> I'd remove the, the vulnerable token. I remove the vulnerable token, considering that I have the berserkers left. Yep. And I'm going to be doing a. You need as many saves as you can get. Yeah. So you want to remove the no, that one? Yeah. The vulnerability. Yep. Token. Okay. So that goes away. That's the number one priority. Yes. And I'm, I'm here. So, so you heal up. here. Yep. And I'm saving it, so I'm going to do this right there. Yep. So you heal up. And I don't like putting them in the trays because sometimes you lose them. Like you don't know whether they're there or not. That token that you put in there? Yeah. You just throw it on the side of it. Yeah. Because now it's like, now I can see that I, it's there. Well, that's when we need those um, uh, things that you built. Plight attendants? The plate attendants, yeah. Um, awesome. Well, what we really need also is some Rebel Light Works tokens for sure. Mm -hmm. Nice and bright. And mm -hmm. then, uh, let's see, your other activations... You want to come up here? Because he hasn't been activated. He hasn't activated yet. Neither one of them have. Right? Yeah. So you want to come up here. Well, I'm done. So it's all yes. on you. All right. You basically want to come up to right here. And back up as far as possible. You want to be right there. Yeah. That way you're going to force me to go through the corpse pile to get to you. Because if yeah. you went on this side, you'd still catch it, right? Yeah. Now, unfortunately, that's more realistic because you only get four inches. But that's where you are. You're farther back, and you're gonna. I'm gonna have to go through the corpse pile to get to you. What if you just attack on this side? Well, if I. So if I only go through here, then yes. But there's a, there's a limit of what you can do because you're here, but you only go four inches. So it's so it's it, you can either go this way, but get your you stick out farther, or you can go this way and get more of the corpse pile. But it's it, this is more beneficial if you stay farther back. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yep. So and then this unit is gonna go. He's gonna march, right? Gonna go ten inches straight forward to get to the fight. Oh, and it'll be my turn first next turn, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Ghost activates and sits there because that's what he wants to do. Boom. So you're gonna score two victory points. You might have gone too fast. And we'll play one more round, but at, at this point with a demo, he's got six points. He'd probably take it. Yeah, it looks like he'd take it, <laughs> anyways. But we'll we'll we can go through one more round. Oh. To the death. Actually, you have three, so I'm gonna score one. Yay! And if you want to hand me the one -er, I'm gonna give you a three. -er. Oh, I like that exchange. Yep. Yeah. And then, <laughs> so about thirty points. We played the eight. It's um y you are correct. It is a twenty something point game though. I forget twenty seven. So it's not a twenty point game. But we're also doing like a demo game I mode. Understand. We're not even we're not even on a four I foot understand. table. So I understand. I'm just giving you more material, man. Absolutely. At thirty points, you'd go to eight. At at, a, at thirty point armies, you would go to eight points and finish the round. At forty point armies, you'd go to ten and finish the round. And at fifty, it's twelve, etc. This card is two. One activates. One of them, so I'm just going to this. Do only have one combat unit left? Oh, and do we draw up to three? Yes. yes. Yeah, you first dump what you don't want and then draw up to three. Okay. Ooh, has that drawn extra cards? It's the horn that wakes us. Yeah, that's a, card. that's a great card. Draw. Night's Watch cards are great. Okay, so since I go first, this isn't actually part of my. It's part of my turn, but I'm not activating. By using Correct. Cards. You can just throw yeah. that down. Okay. And then At decide. At the start of a friendly turn, target one friendly unit and draw two tactics cards. Val, with this card. 
targets a night watch's unit, which it does. Right? Yep. Oh, just pick one. You may attach this card to them. Your unit may only have one valid time. While attached, they gain at any time while you control the this uh, thing. You may discard this valve to attach one valve tactic card from your hand or discard. So the idea is you put it on him uh -huh. and on the unit. Okay. You, you can't have two at once. So this ah. guy has one. I mean, you can you can get rid of this one to put it, but this one's really good, okay. right? Okay. So we'll put it on him, and right. then if you have this at any time, you can just go okay, swap this out, go to the discard pile, put a new one on. Which is really nice. It's a recycle. Uh -huh. right. But for now, we can just do that for now. Because there's no harm in doing that. Right, because it's not part of my well it's not part of my uh actual thing. It's not right? hampering anything. Right. Just and there's no vows in your discard file, so it so, doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so that was just that. That was done, right? Yep. Yeah. So you have to go first. Oh you already did. Alright, how do you get extra first? You played the horn. Oh, I played. I got two cards for that. There you go. Okay. Okay. Now it's that. now it's my turn to activate something. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you got that. And it's John Snow's unit. Did you read this one yet? Yeah. Hey, he's been out out of out of the game for a while. I think. Yeah, he has. When a friendly combat unit activates, choose one of the following. If this unit contains John Snow, you may choose two instead. So these bullet points are what you get to choose. Oh, okay, get to choose two but of those. It's, but, it, but if it's but if you're doing it on John's unit, you yeah. get two. So okay. two plus two speed is Got one. It. Melee attacks get plus one to hit, and the other one is heal. All and right, let's the do condition. the first two ones. Let's, let's move him and attack these guys. Exactly. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so that'll be a charge. Okay. Right. So first thing you would do is you figure it out. So now you would select the what you're activating. I'm activating. Oh, okay. here we go. Activating this guy. Exactly. I'm declaring a charge. Okay. So you're gonna go. So you probably pivot a little bit. So you want to pivot. Uh, not on a charge. Yeah, you pivot on a charge. Yep. Remember, that's a misprint. Oh. All right. So you're gonna be need an after the pivot, you'll need a. Yeah, let's say. After, you're gonna need an eight. After the charge. Um, yeah. No. Nope. Yeah, you'll need an eight. Yeah. You'll need an eight. Not another. Pivot after the charge. Right? No. no okay. it's, it's an attack. If I hit my corner on there, is it a. So it's not about where you hit, it's about where you start from. So remember, we use his line of sight. So what he sees is where we're going to end up. Oh. He sees you in the front. Okay, so it's going to so be a final gonna, attack. Yeah. So you're going to add plus two and plus one to hit, right? Mm -hmm. Plus two speed. Yep. So you need anything but a one. Okay, you get there. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to come in like this, like a wrecking ball. Right. <laughs> hit. Now, how do you want to align? Now then. Yep. If I move it to the side, oops, sorry, can you go past me and hit these guys? No, I'm locked in. You're locked. I'm locked in. But if I stay that, then these guys can come and try and Correct. Let's do that. So you're going to go like that. Yep. Boom. Okay. Then my second one would be uh, my lay attacks would have plus one to hit. Yep. Okay. Cool. Which is now. Which is now. Which is right now. Right now. And this is the first time I'm using this guy. See? This yeah. Right They're kind of like your tanks, but they do have eight dice, so it's pretty nice. Yeah. So they have eight dice. That. All these go together? Well, yeah. this this is just going to last for the attack. For this turn, right? yeah. um, bond. Oh, the ghost could move, but he's, he's not. No, ghost is right, right where he he's right. He's right there. Eight dice. Um, this is from Morales, right? Yep. That work. Okay. Eight dice. And they attack on a three plus. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. So that's six. Seven, eight hits. Is that correct? I'm sorry. I'm I'm on the you chat right now. You get to reroll the hit. Did you do that? No, not this one. So you got two ones there. So reroll both. Mm -hmm. So it's All plus eight. one to hit. So you hit eight times. Three, six, seven, eight. Okay. So I have a five up save. 
So I make two and lose six guys. You make two. It says here for each blocked hit, the attacker suffers one so automatic hit. That, that that's when he attacks. attacks that's when I attack you. I want to counter attack that. Mm -hmm. okay. Wow. This is just throw those in. That is good. These are good. Um, <laughs> all right. So now I got my my panic test. I'm a four plus one. I pass. Okay. Berserkers don't get scared. Berserkers yeah. don't get scared easily. Okay. So. All right. But you almost actually failed. I know. <laughs> Alright, my go? I think, is it, I think it's round four, right? It's round four. Boom. So now it's my go. It is. Okay, so then, now this, this card here goes, goes away. away. Yep. So discard? Yep. Uh, is this, this isn't a bounce. How do you determine what a bow card looks like? It says like? it on the card. It says it on the card, yeah. Oh, like this. Let's say bow. Oh, I see. Alright, so I'm going to go. I'm going to take the free attack again. No. I'm going to go here with it. And then when I do so, I'm going to make a card because now I'm going to make you vulnerable. With it. Bam. Bam. So that's all it does. Uh, one remaining. Oh, what? only one remaining, right? Yeah. So I get 10 attacks on you. No rerolls, but I need threes. Can I play this card right now that you did that? No, because I haven't expanded the token yet. Oh. Okay. No, you're fine. You're fine. Everything's good. I was too late. Nice. So, five hits at minus one to the save. Now you want to activate counterattack as the order. So you're going to take this, put it here. And so for every successful save, you're going to bounce it back to me. Okay. okay? So you have five hits on you at minus one because I'm sundering. Let's go ahead and roll this hits. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. My defense is a three plus, but it's now a four plus. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, so I, I can start using these cards later, though. Right? Yeah, you're about yes, to use them. Like, we have to do um, this first. Yeah. After. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. So you save three. You save three, and now I'm going to use. The so, vulnerable token okay. to make you re-roll. Yep, so now he's using a token. So these stay dead. Yep. And I have to re-roll these. Three. Except there's a lot of tracking, I know, but now he's using now he's using a token. Oh, now I do this. Mm -hmm. Cancel the effect of that token. Okay, so the token goes away. Now you have a choice. Do you want to keep you want to attach that vow and discard this one? Or do you want to keep this vow on here? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> but to what? <laughs> when when the seal activates, you may place one condition token on an enemy within long range. Okay. You want you want that instead. This is a good one. So you want this one instead. So there you go. All right. So I have three. You have, you lose two guys. Lose two guys. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to make my saves really quick. Yep. I make two. Wow. And now you have to take a panic test. Wow. Okay. It's like if you had the steps of an attack right now, it would it'd be easier to track to follow. But, but you're getting it. When this unit passes morale tests, yeah. you can restore. But you haven't passed it yet. You gotta, okay. you gotta make the test. You first. gotta make the test first. So. so I need a five plus. Yep. Is there anything else happening? Six, yes. Six you get a, plus? You get a plus four one, plus, four plus. minus one. Yeah, uh -huh. so they cancel each other. So five plus with two guys. Mm -hmm. you're, huh. <laughs> you're fine. Okay. okay, so you so, passed. And now you get to use his other order. I can restore up to three wounds. To D3. D3 wounds. Yeah. Just two or more. So you heal back up the point. <laughs> so that was completely pointless. Yeah. <laughs> and then after a friendly unit completes a melee, I'm going to retreat. Oh look, I retreated. So I get to go. Where did I go? Oh, it's right there. So I'm gonna go. So the first thing would happen, we would, we would resolve this thing. So you would actually pivot first if you wanted to. Yeah. yeah which is fine like that. I don't and pivot. then it's the same trigger that he had, but he's the active player, so he does his first. Right. So um, anyone else can now make a free maneuver or march. This one here. Yep. So you want to maneuver. Off the corpse pile because I backed up a little bit. Yeah. So you want to maneuver off the corpse pile, and then what I would do is immediately take the free maneuver spot to maneuver them closer 
I mean, to eventually we're, we're get just, in. Because we're just going for death at this yeah. point, right? Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, he'd stay on the token. Yeah. Okay, so do I use this card now? First? You use the card. The first, the first maneuver. So I did my thing first. Right. That's done. You're going to play that card now. Right. Okay. And it would be a march? It would be no... Or a maneuver. You want to do a maneuver. Because the thing is, if you... Get past this you got to get past this, and right. you're minus one. You can't end in here. Right. So you want to maneuver off the corpse pile is the important part. Got it. You want to go like this. Okay. And then you want to go four inches from the six to the two. Four because it's a five minus one? Yep. Got it. Okay. So you're just going to end up there for now. Might as well stay on the token. Just yeah, for now. Yeah. And then... I can pivot again. You can pivot again. Right. What, what? Mm -hmm. well, I don't do a charge. Sure. Well, the thing is, here's what's going to happen: is you're going to right. So that was this is all during my turn, right? Yes. So. Oh, he's now saying, it's he's saying he wants to charge now, but no, no, he's no, out no, of range. Not yet, not yet. No, I mean, I just later on. Yeah. I'm playing this card during your turn. Yes. Right. Okay. So now what I would do. Oh, I, I can either put this one or this one on there. Yep. Yeah. Or they can show the force. Nam, nam, nam. I'm running. I'm going to do that. I'm going to try this. Ah, these guys. So now what I would do, because now it's your turn. Right. I would take the free maneuver to get them closer. Because right now it's a long charge. You're not guaranteed that charge. I agree with you. Completely. And we'll do the, this yep. guy. That's the right guy. On this one. Mm -hmm. And he draws. I should go ahead. You have two cards, right? Mm -hmm. um, take the money bag one so you can have it. Otherwise, it goes to the bottom of the deck. And that one goes away. Because oh, this is funny. Yeah. Because now everything's under. And now you're going to move four inches forward. So we're going to go from. Actually, he's activated, right? He's not activated yet. Oh, you did the free attack. I did the free attack. Got it. Got it. Got it. So you want to move forward. The, back, the rear is going to move from the five to the one. Like so. Bam. Yeah. Like that. So and now then, you, and then you and then you pivot. Yeah. So that you're like this. <laughs> that that way, if he charges you, <laughs> um, so he, he'd have to align like this, which is terrible. But it's my turn, right? Well, that is your turn to do that. Because you did this, right? You did that. Yeah. I'm just I'm just messing around. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Just, okay. Well, I, I will. <laughs> I'm just playing with trays. Okay. <laughs> So now it's my go. Oh, that wasn't an that, that was that was not their activation. Okay. So now it's my go. I'm gonna go ahead and survive. Survive, yeah, basically. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, play this card here. When a friendly unit activates, they can make a free maneuver. So this unit is gonna come. This is gonna come this way further. This is all about killing at this point. So it's gonna come this way. Actually, do I want to do I want to fight? <sighs> Screw it, we're gonna go this way. We're gonna fight you over here. Okay. I wanna fight this guy over here. And then we're gonna go ahead and um do a charge. I'm charging you in front of me. Get that. Whammo. Whammo. There you go. Now you get ten dice. What? Why? Because I have Caitlyn. Oh, even we, though you have Brax? Mm -hmm. I still strike with the highest. But remember, Berserkers want to lose ranks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have eight hits. Okay. So, so after our attack dice are rolled, automatically block. Well, you rings. don't get the benefit of that. Oh, why not? Because you're not. I don't have it yet. You don't have it. But you, if you have the card in your hand, you can play the next card 
and get the benefit of it. Do you have that same card again? He doesn't have it as he has. Oh, he does? He does. Oh, same thing again? So you have the card in your hand you can play. This one here? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you play it. I'm going to block D3. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and do that. Okay. That's the first effect you get. So you block one. Ooh. Block one. One goes away. Right. And then you have to choose if you want to replace or keep the card. <laughs> it's the same card. It's a, it's a technicality. Yeah. Okay. He has to choose. It is. So you take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven at minus one. Seven at minus one. Mm -hmm. so this is four, a great five, time. Uh, six, oh, this is one card. Oh, you already used your counter. Deck. You already used your counter. Deck. Um, so that doesn't work. No. That's over there. No. And this G fives. These are Swarm Brothers. This card right here. This guy here. Mm -hmm. uh, on a four plus, but it, because it's a charge. So it's a, a sundering. Not it's a sundering, because you're a sundering thing. Mm -hmm. I have to get a five plus on this. Mm -hmm. Oops. Got two, I think. You got a rank. Ranking on some. Ranking. Let's see again. Oh, I got five guys. So. Five guys. What he but, means is he destroyed an entire rank, uh, which is a lot of times what you're trying to do because now they're weaker, right? right? So he's like, yeah, you got a rank. Five minutes, right? Yep. Okay. Doesn't matter, though, because of Amon. <laughs> yep. And then you have to take a panic test. And because of this? No, no, you take a panic test because I attacked you. Every attack, there's a panic oh, test. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. uh, panic. So this guy here, mm -hmm. six plus. But what does this do again? Uh, I can choose to make you reroll one or both dice. Gotcha. I'm gonna let you keep it. Yeah, that's your eye. Say guys. So you lose four guys. Holy mackerel. That is not good. Yeah. Not a good time to roll double ones. No. No, you're fine. You're fine because game on. Yeah, because that I am pretty much all tapped out. So it's now your go. So the correct response would be to use Amon to a heal. Amon on the money bags. Amon on the money bags to heal that. Uh, you know, just leave the magnet there. Oh. Or, or, okay, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Take it off. So. I put Amon on the money bags. Yep. Bam. So now you get to cleanse the token. Right. And now you get to heal six guys. Oh, it's six. Six, because they. <laughs> yeah. Because there's two two ranks. Uh, plus three, plus six. Yeah, six, six guys. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Did you miss one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I... I just went for coffee. I said I'd be right back. <laughs> Four, five... Nice watch has the best coffee. <laughs> six, 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 six. All right. All um, right. Now is my go. And... I'm gonna go ahead and zap you. So take a panic test at minus one. Okay. That's all I can do, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are six. So I need seven with these two dice. Did so you, you lose one. Need that last rank. All right. Bummer. And that's it. So I'm all tapped out. Um, you've Mike done everything up there. They've activated. Ghost is sitting pretty because he doesn't care. So he can do stuff. You get five attacks on me. How many? Five. Five attacks. Mm -hmm. How's that? How's that? You're, you're down a rank, so you're looking at the yellow number. You're oh, right. five dice. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Five, okay. Oh, five. I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, no you get one attack. Five, five, five dice. Five dice. <laughs> um, he has the sundering on him now. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no. Yep, that's it. Actually, We're at the, two. Not. the last swing of the game. Mm -hmm. Take them out. Who's that shit? Yeah. So this is the only card I have left. Yeah. Okay. Five attacks. Um, just a little matter. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, what's no, my no sixes. You need threes. You need twos. You're right here. Oh, These guys. Oh, I keep, yeah. Yeah. You're doing it to yourself. <laughs> Blammo! I lose two. But you're happy. You, you lose that, three. Huh? You are right. I lose three. Why is that? Sundry. It's, it's sundry. I forgot about sundry. So I now have a panic test at plus one. I don't think it's possible to, to finish it off. No. Okay. But the game is yours, so. 
That is the end of the round and the end of the game. Thank you for the game. With oh, a final you. score, after Mark would score Ghost Point, would be... 7-3. to 7-3. Seven to three in favor of the Night's Watch. And our newly new player, Mark, for the victory. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> all right, so uh, tell us all about how you feel and your thoughts, because it's been a while since we had a rookie. Uh, old guys rule. Old guys rule. <laughs> I'm 56 years old, and I love this game. This oh, is great. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's some highs and lows, right? Well, some... you really kind of have to play it a few times to get all these little details. So thank you for helping. Good point. Those. That's yeah. A, yeah, that's a good thing we should mention. Run it through games in, and, and you'll feel a lot better about it. Um, as far as how to play, it's it's quite simple once you get there, right? It feels like there's a lot as you play, but as Mark mentioned, a couple more a couple more games and he'd be solid. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So any other thoughts, comments on the game before we talk about anything that we missed or anything? Mm. And then we'll go into the final. Final chat about army construction and factions and stuff. You know, I can't think of my head's kind of reeling at the moment. Yeah. But, uh, yeah you know, it, it flowed well. Um, card use is critical. I can see that. Indeed. Um, and knowing when to play it. Um, knowing knowing what the, the center things do for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and how you can use them to your advantage. Wow. So it's just a lot of strategy. Um, no, I, I, awesome. It was a great game, and I, I okay. appreciate you guys helping me out. Through it. So, um, we'll wrap up this specific game with thoughts from me and Matt about any rules or things that we missed that we didn't get to experience in this experience. We'll do that real quick. I think we did all the actions, so that's good. Um, any kind of weird charging and alignment scenarios you can find on my other video. Uh, for specifically charging and aligning. Um, uh, anything that you think of that we missed, perhaps? In a... Not really. I think we covered most of it pretty well. Um, how, did, how did Mark get roped into doing this? <laughs> I don't um, know. Ask Carl that one. Um, I, I, well, I don't know. I guess I can say... Uh, he is fresh in his uh, days of retirement, so he was looking for a game today. And I said, you know what? That's great timing because Matt's coming over here for a video. <laughs> That's pretty good. And uh, nice. due to the nature of the video, it was just perfect. I mean, if it was a highly detailed, nuanced video of a specific thing that experts are looking for, then he wouldn't be the right fit, right? But we're doing a video on... On beginners on how, how to begin playing and so it was absolutely perfect and he um, you know I'll buy him lunch or something later for <laughs> oh he heard that dang it I thought he was gone um, all right so um, as far as things miss I think we got all the basics um, there is tiebreaker for a game if it's a tie at the end of round six there are six rounds in the game, of course. What else uh, can I think of? There's other terrain come in the starter that we didn't use. Um, current factions. Okay, so so uh, congrats to Mark. He won. We're going to talk about the current factions, how they play currently, and just quickly. And, um, and then we'll go real quick into how to make your army and suggested, suggest, suggestions on how to start. Um, with a faction that you like. So we just experienced Night's Watch and Starks. As I mentioned earlier, the Night's Watch love to heal. Um, they're kind of tanky in that aspect. It goes hand in hand. Swarm Brothers are arguably uh, the most annoying unit because they're in this faction that likes to heal and they hit really hard. So the Swarm Brothers are a favorite, a fan favorite. Um, you got Ghost and Jon Snow, of course, doing things. Um, but yeah, that's kind of their, their shtick is, is the big healing sucks. If you're on the other side of it, hmm. really sucks. Um, the Starks, they like to hit hard. They like to move fast. Um, kind of generally speaking are more fragile than most, except for the free folk. Um, but they also get angry as they die. So that's your Starks. Now, as I talk about factions real quick, 
another note to all this is that with heroes, uh, you know, characters that you can add to the game, you can kind of you can kind of almost play any way you like with any faction. Very loud. That was very loud. Sorry. Um, so if you if you love a faction, you can you can tweak it to, to how you want to play. Um, and as more comes out, and more is released, it'll get even better in that sense. Um, but I guess I guess what I should focus on is the is the base tactics deck that you have to play with. Right? Yeah, for each faction. So the Knights Watch, they have these Vow mechanics, which are great. You you get a little you get a little effect from your tactics card, and then you get to attach it to a unit, as you saw in the game. Um, and that's the Vow mechanic for Knights Watch. It, that's also very annoying on the other side of the table. Um, and then the Starks, they are pretty much all aggressive. I think the only help they get in defense is Direwolf's Fervor, which helps you pass the Panic Test. But everything else is like punch, 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 punch. There's a couple good things, but it's more commander specific. Like Umber, if you're using Umber as your commander, he's like, oh, a unit died. They get to fight right now. Yeah. But like they're more, Starks are more about getting the charge for free, yep. or about the attack. Or retreating for free so you can do different things. Landing hits, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they have a couple defensive things, but for the most... There's nothing really specific for the defense. It's more for the panic test or making you disorderly charged or things like that. So Yeah, but yeah, but mostly it's punching. Um, mostly it's punching. So then we'll move on to the free folk that I mentioned already. Hmm. Um, they're going to be your... Or AKA Wildlings, if you're not familiar, they're going to be your uh, swarm army. Well, they can be. You can take all giants if you want. I'm I'm just saying. Generally speaking, you can get quite the high number of units on the table Ooh. if you really wanted to. Um, true. And yes, they do have giants. Um, so yeah, once that free folk heroes drops, you'll get a lot more variety, as I said. But their basic deck, I'm actually not too familiar with. So their basic deck um, has a lot of maneuverability. They're all about getting a free maneuver or things that interact with the horse maneuver. Oh, their their basic cards have swarm tactics in them yeah. as well. Yeah. And their basic cards are more about okay, you're engaged with two of my units, so it's minus to hit me. Or I'm engaged with multiple. If you're engaged with multiple of my units. I now gain Sundering. Right, right, right. Uh, and there's other cards like that. They also have the ability to bring back a tray That's right. as well with yeah. one of their cards. Yep. So um, the Horde, yeah. The Horde is pretty good. And then we have... What am I missing? Uh, Lannisters. Lannisters are hate. The almighty they Lannisters. They, um, they, they got your counter spell in there. Yeah. <laughs> they so, got, uh, so all... They're very highly defensive, all, and they focus on panicking you off the board. Yeah. So all factions right now have the ability to stop cards being played. Specifically, they're proactive with the cards. So the Starks have the ability to play a card that says you don't get to play cards after I charge you. Or the, the Nightwatch yeah. have Ghost or jo uh, Mormont has a card that also does the same thing. Yep. Uh, the Free Folk have a card as well that does the same thing. The Lannisters, however, have a counterplot card. And it's a reactive card which in my opinion makes it better. So what there says is after an opponent plays a card, you now get to play this card instead, and it counters the card entirely on a die roll of a three up. Yep. And if you control the cat crown, you get the reroll. Yep. So in a lot of ways, it's much more powerful because you don't get the blanket statement over your whole turn. But if you need to stop, um, say, Nightwatch from using a card specifically, it's like, no. You don't get to do that. <laughs> so the Lannisters are all about tricksy. They don't, for the most part, their basic unit does not hit the hearts. They have some hard hitting units, but they're more about I hit I hit all right. My basic unit has a really good save, or I have good saves, and then I have Lannister supremacy where I pass panic checks, making my opponent get hit. They're more about sticking around and then doing a devastating hit. With like the Pyromancers or the Knights of the Rock, just like that one hit where it's like, cool, take 15 hits. Right. With minus one to your save. Or don't save at all. Or don't save at all, yep. And they're like, cool, here's, boom, one unit just disappears. Um, or they're more about like saying, no, you don't get to play with the tactics for today or for like a round or two, you know. Right. So, yeah, they're, they're denial, they counter, they they make you panic off the board. Mm -hmm. Lannisters can be frustrating to play against. Okay, just throw that anywhere. 
I'm not throwing it. I'm... And then um, I think last, lastly released right now is the Boltons, uh, which is the neutral faction, but we only have Boltons so far. And they... So the Boltons are, are... have a pretty good <laughs> tactic stack. They're, they're like... The Boltons tactic stack is more about... It's a little weird seeing them. They're like... really cool. They're like the toolbox, right? So, I think, well, I heard, I think I've heard of, that term before. They, so... They... Their cards are the neutral cards are all about literally taking you and ripping you into pieces. <laughs> so the one I don't remember all the neutral cards off the top of my head. I'll pull them up. But um, they're fantastic. The one I do remember is if you kill an enemy unit, you regain D six plus one wounds. And it's like really, what? Yes. Yeah, I'm like, you're kidding. So you can return cards to your hand. You can prevent <laughs> opponent from playing tactics cards. <laughs> you can switch condition tokens to a different condition token. You can reroll panic tests. You can heal. You can replace a zone effect with losing abilities. Your opponents lose abilities. And more healing. So, yeah, they're pretty all around. I mean, a little bit of everything there. Um, what's cool about the Boltons and Neutral Faction right now is their commanders. Our Ramsey is awesome. He's amazing. Um... But as as a neutral fraction, it kind of makes sense, right? They they like the money back, so they do a little bit more healing than anything else, but not to not like Night's Watch. It's just they got a little bit of everything going on. Um. So yeah, that's a little bit into factions. Um, I highly suggest um a song. I th I'll put the link into the description later. Um, A S. <laughs> see if I can do this. A-S-O-I-A-F builder.com if you want to mess around with building a list. Um, it has the restrictions in there. Um, man, I, th I don't think there's much else to say. We could build a list right in front of you, but really you got to get hands on with it. Um, there's you know point limits that you need to uh, decide what, how many points you want to build and go from there. Uh, I guess, I mean really a whole video, if, if you have no idea how to build a list, each unit and attachment cost points let's let's do the basics let's do the basics let's i told i said what i was going to do it so let's do it so We're for example know. i'm just going to show them like fine. go ahead so here's the stark outriders here on the back of the card is a flavor profile as well as the point cost okay so each unit and attachment which is here here's the umber champion that he used that cost one point each unit and attachment costs points, and you have an X amount of points to play with depending on what kind of game you want to play. So if we're playing a 40-point game, you have up to 40 points to spend on your army. And you you want to get into once, – once you start messing around with that and seeing, like, you know, the better – of course, the better unit is going to cost more points. Uh, and then you, you can start seeing the synergies with, like – Playing Umber, uh, Great John Umber as your commander, which is for free. I guess I should talk about that too. You want more Umber units. So list building is all about synergy. Um, let's take a commander card. Where's Rob? I don't know where he went. He's over oh. there. Oh, he's under here. So picking a commander will have this red C, which means C. he's free. And he's going to add those six cards that we talked about earlier into that tactics deck, which are listed here, two of each makes the deck a certain flavor and in this case your commander is an attachment so you detach rob to a unit but i'm going to pull out another card you also have non-combat unit commanders Let's see if i can find one real quick Doo -doo -doo -doo. where are you howland uh, or ruse Bruce? Bruce? There's Howland. Alright. So here's another example of a commander card. You have the Red Sea. You have the cards that he adds, two of each. But this, in this case, he's a non-combat unit. So he hangs out here, but he is still your commander. Uh, you would He is free to add to your list. You add the cards to the deck, gives it a certain flavor, and then you build your deck kind of around that flavor. I mean, not your deck. You build your uh, army around that flavor. So that's the basics. Pick your commander. Spend points up to the amount of points you want to build. 
And um, I guess you could point out the basics like, you know, you don't want an entire list of glass cannons, maybe? <laughs> no, no. So, when so building, different units do different things. You so kind of want a variety. You want a variety of things. So depending on what you're building, you want to... How do I describe this? You want to take into account like the different types of missions there are. In general, most missions have objectives or objectives that are going to be placed on the board. Uh, in addition to that, you still need to be able to kill your opponent very well. So you need to be able to hold an objective uh, or two or more, depending on what game mode. Yeah, depending on the game mode. As well as you need to be able to just nuke things off the board. For instance, the Veterans of the Watch are a very solid unit. There are things out there that will kill them very easily in one to two activations. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that you take two units of Knights of the Rock, especially when you get to the flank, and all of a sudden they're going to disappear. Same with the Swarm Brothers. You saw how the Swarm Brothers came back very quickly hey, Mom. from having like one or two models left to having a full, a full three ranks and then attacking the next their next activation at full ranks. So the, there's ways to counter that, one of which is just be like, hey, I'm going to hit you really hard and you're going to have one model left. Cool. You do your super heal. I'm going to do it again. And then the unit just dies. Right. Because if you're killing eight models per activation, it doesn't matter if I super heal it. You're just going to – I'm going to lose. Because it's like, okay, cool. Yeah, you're, you're just going to lose that unit. There's not much you can do about it. Um, other ways to counter the healing is simply to, take, to shut down Ammon uh, using cards or uh, things on the board. Or simply take the heal spot, even if you don't need it. Um, Peter Baelish. Yes. Uh, but there are, like I said, you have to take into account you need to hit hard, but you also need to be able to hold an objective. Now, with that said, different armies do these different ways. For instance, the, the Free Folk, uh, a lot of players, when they're playing multiple objectives, will take a giant list where they have four giants. Now, giants don't really hit that hard. Um, they, do, they just do straight wounds, but they do uh, D3 plus one if they're unwounded. I roll a three. Um, but that's not really hitting that hard. You're not going to wipe out a unit, a, a unit with a giant at full strength. But the giant is hard to dislodge if it grabs an objective. It's really risky to the point where it's like how Ghost was sitting here by himself on this objective the whole game. Where I'm like, I'm just going to let that giant sit there. I don't want to deal with that giant because that's that's going to that's going to be a hard thing to kill. You know what I mean? So, but at the same token, though, you can take the swarm and where you have nine units on the board, I'm not even joking about that, and you march it up and you t engage two or three units at a time and you just quickly can take things down. Um, or with the Starks, you can take... Uh, great Axes. You, you can take the Great Axes, the Umbar Berserkers, um, just various other things where you can be like, okay, I'm going to hit you hard. On average, you're not going to kill something in one activation. Don't get disheartened if it's like, well, I only did five wounds. Like, usually it takes two to three activations or more to kill a unit. You're not going to... for the, It's possible. I've seen somebody do 15 hits that are Sundering before in one one attack. But for the most part, it's you're not going to instigate. You're not going to instantly kill a tray. With the exception of the dog. The right. Do the dogs and like all the like all the dogs and like stuff like that, like with the exception of the giants, anything on these little tiny trays, don't really think of them as a full unit. Like you get you get the you get the dire wolves for free. They're very nice and they're effective, but Ghost has two wounds. Ghost is gonna die if he gets attacked enough. <laughs> Alright, he has a three up save, which is nice, but it's like he's still gonna die. So he's a speed bump. He's a speed bump. He's a speed bump. <laughs> I charge him in to hold you until now you have to waste an activation of some kind to kill Ghost. Yeah, so we're, we've been digressing, but basically for army construction, you got to have the stuff in front of you to know what I'm talking about. You know, think about think about the generic tactic cards that faction comes with and how and how, what you want to do with them because that's where you're going to be getting most of the game. Um that's how you can tell what kind of faction is for you, generally speaking. Um, and then your, like I said before, pick your commander, which is free. Add those cards in, 
and then start spending the allotted points on adding units and attachments. And you're good to go. Um, there's no, there's, I saw this post earlier. There's no perfect, there's no like, you know, this is the best list for this. There, there, there are different armies that do better at certain things, but I wouldn't say it's like there is a all rounder best list at everything. People, at least in the local area here, complain often about the night watch. And I'm often pointing out, listen, you take a well constructed um, Lannister list and you make them take the saves, their panic test at minus two, to the point where I don't even want to attack you. I'm sitting on an objective. It's, we're doing a mission. I'm sitting on an objective. I'm like, I have no reason to attack you right now. I'm going to sit here and not attack you because there's no benefit for me attacking you. Right. I might kill three guys and then lose four on my own attack. And it's like, why would I do that? That makes no sense. Right, but so. the idea is, you know, I, I've seen a couple different ways to get try to get used to what you want to play. One is to take like a full list of one type of unit. Then you then you kind of master that unit, you know. That's yeah. kind of interesting. Um, another is a full variety on the on the board. Yeah, I would say the best, the biggest thing is just to get the experience. Go out there and play games. Yep, absolutely. Go out there and play, you know, non optimal lists. Play optimal lists. Play with one NC. Play with four NCs. Figure out what works for you um, and what you like to do. I myself, because normally games are played at the forty point level. I myself prefer three NCUs at the 40-point level. But that's also because I, I'm a Night Watch player, and I, in order to use a lot of the vows, you have to control things, and I like having the extra options to do things. I've seen people run two NCUs and do just fine, because that's an extra unit attachment or even a unit on the board by running two NCUs. Um... And I've seen people do elite armies where they only have four units on the board. And I've seen people do swarms with Nightwatch before. And people are like, how do you have more activations than me as a Nightwatch player? And I'm like, it's a good question. Um, <laughs> I don't know how. It's a good question. I don't know how. I don't know how. <laughs> well, the thing is, though, like, I have, four, I have four units, but each one has a three-point attachment in it. And so it's just... I would say probably another big thing to take into is figure out what you're doing, but also take, keep in mind what other armies can do. Because you have to remember, like, you can build an army that can hit really hard, but if there's another army out there that can sustain those hits, but hits harder than you, then they're going to be winning because, you know, they you both take the hits equally well, but they hit harder than you. So... Um, which is great because the format, if you want to get into competition, is two lists, right? Yeah. And, and we're not going to talk about that now. We're, we're going to yeah. wrap things up. Um, but be, beginner-wise is a great point that Matt said is get out there and play. Um, you saw the supplies you need. Um, you saw the, all the basics here. If you're interested in more nuances of charging and aligning, I have that video as well. Um, Use those resources, War Council app and ASOIAFBuilder.com to to mess around with making lists, and you're good to go. Find a player, find a find a buddy to play, hit your local game shop, get it, get out there. This game is amazing. It's very fun. Uh, I've been addicted since I got the Kickstarter. I had cardboard and prototype car, prototype cards I was using, and um, just love it. It's 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 just such a blast. If you guys haven't started getting games on the table yet, get out there and do it. Um, any other uh, final words from Matt? No, man. I'd say, like I said, if you want to get just get out there and get some games on, figure out what works for you. It's There is no best army out there. There is no best list out there. Just go out and have some fun. Um, there are some things you can do with each army that help you against other armies, just generally other armies and other lists. But, you know, those are just – that's an experience thing. Like I said, go out there and play. Um, I will say that – uh, the base boxes, the starter sets are great, um, but you will need a little bit more as you're going on in your journey with the game than just the starter box, I'd say. You want to... I mean, if I, I guess you could say, though, if your main priority, number one, is mm -hmm. to just minimize cost to play, Night's Watch Starter. 
Yes. You can play right there. Boom. Yes. You're ready. Yeah. Um, um, and it's and it's not a bad list either. It's not a bad list either. <laughs> um, but I, as I said, it's uh, just uh, – what was I going to say? Uh, but yeah, you will you will need maybe one or two more units than the base the base starter set for each faction. Um, but honestly, you can get an entire a well rounded army for any of the factions out there for under two hundred bucks. I'd say. Oh, absolutely. The only exception would probably be the free folk, just because of the swarm list, and they're going to be a little bit more, but not too much more, just because nah. you need more units on the board. Um, yeah, but a starter box got everything you need. Um, it's, it's, it's fantastically ready for players to hop in. So if hopefully anything that we went over helped, um, it was kind of quite an extensive uh, demonstration. Um, I don't think we missed anything. Hopefully, well, we probably did. But um, we're gonna wrap things up because it's been about four hours, I think. <laughs> and uh, we have a the rest of our Thursday to do. So thanks for anyone who tuned in for joining us uh, on the table gaming. Chase, thanks for popping in. Mark from AOS, I, Song of Ice and Fire Builder. I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to say Song of Ice and Fire Builder. Yeah. Song of Ice and Fire is abbreviated. Builder.com. Thanks, Mark, for popping in. We got Brian. Brian is, um, I think I think that's Brian from, uh, thanks, Brian. I think that's Brian from Big Top Gaming, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'll put his link in there as well. Awesome videos. I love how he does it. He, he v records a game, puts it on double time, and then talks about the game. It's a fantastic uh, way to do it. Um, all these content creators are are um, are just such a such a staple in the com community. You guys are you guys are fantastic. Matt's been doing demos left and right. Thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, I hope you guys love the game as much as I do. <laughs> um, I'll try to get the camera up more often. I think it's like I've been doing like once a month maybe at the most. Um, life has just been crazy. So I hope to see you guys soon. Uh, on camera and off. So cheers and have a great one. Okay, the following is going to be edited out. How do I stop this? <laughs> I, don't, I, just, I don't know. Every just, every time I go every, live, I forget how to stop the live stream. Oh, let me see. Let's see. How oh, BS are you dealing with now? Um, let's go there maybe. Oh, you know what? Should probably just go to OBS to stop it. Because YouTube's difficult. <laughs>